Hello and welcome back to the new video. In this new video, we are going to see the demo of our project. That is, we are going to build Mern authentication project using JWT. That is nothing but JSON Web Token. So, if as you have seen in the previous video, what is the JSON Web Token? How it works in a theoretical way, but in the coming videos we'll learn how to implement it and how it is useful in our providing security in our authentication so this will be the project of our uh, course that is authentication project this is going to be simple and yet more functionality of providing to this project so first of all you will be having a login register and dashboard pages but you are going to have a much more functionality and security added to it so let's first see this as you can see the url that is heroku deployed application so you'll also learn how to deploy our mern stack applications in heroku platform so don't worry about that part we'll be having at the end of this uh, course we'll be having a separate section on how to deploy mern stack application so first of all we'll see uh, before logging you need to have a click on register here right so if you register here and submit then that data will be saved into your database so before that you need to handle or have a form validation you cannot type just anything in the email address right uh, you need to have a, a genuine email address and the password strength also you cannot have simple like one two three four five six number it should have a, a set of instructions that is a special characters required a capital and a small so those are all are included in this course so first of all before registering uh, let's check this login because i've already have an account uh, in this application so let's check this so i'll type my email id here so just for the purpose and wantedly i'm giving the wrong password here so let's see uh what is the error that will be thrown to us so if i click on submit then we need to get a, some kind of pop-up that is if it's correct or wrong as you can see here we got invalid password because i've entered a password incorrectly now let's go with uh, another email which is not registered like uh, which has never been registered in this application so let's check that with xyz at the rate of gmail.com and we are going to give some random password let's just be this random password and if i click on this submit let's see what response we'll get so it says that your email is not registered so it will also say that if your email is already registered and if you enter wrong password it will say the invalid password and if your email is not registered it will not throw you a password it will first throw you that if your email is exist in the database or not so this is one of the additional uh, feature we are going to add and before that uh, let's check another functionality in register so here we are going to give a uh, input field site so let's type uh, names and all those so let's give with my name and after that uh, we'll give our address that is email address and the password let just be uh, some easy password i'm just typing uh, in a random way and now the form validation you'll be knowing uh, when you click on this submit button so if i click on this submit button okay it just say that we need to have this uh, at the rate in the email obviously because uh, no email uh, will be without at the rate so i'm gonna give it that and let's just go with this submit button and this is the form validation i was talking about so it will let us know what are the wrong or what are the minimum requirements your input fields your data should be having that is a name should be of at least six characters so a four digit or four letter name is not entertained here the email address it's a form validation is correct because it's having a date and after that a domain and if you see the password field here it says that password should be of length of minimum 6 to 15 and it should contain one uppercase lowercase number and a special character so if you type all this automatically the error message will be gone so i'll just show you so if i enter more than six you can see already that is gone 
if i again have less than six characters again the error message appears so similarly password section also i'll have this according to the requirements then you can see the password error has been gone and similarly i'll have this confirm password also so now the error message has gone for confirm password as well so if i click on submit now it should throw me some kind of response so it says user already registered with this email so what you have known with this you can see that if a user has been registered with a particular email then he cannot register twice a unique account is for unique email so we are not going to retain any multiple registers with a single email id so this is also another feature and the most important uh, functionality we are going to give is the confirmation one here the email address this we cannot give any fake email address this needs to be genuine because once you click on this submit if you enter the details and click on submit it will ask you to verify from your uh, mail so you need to give this a genuine uh, email address and i'll show you in a separate section we'll be having how the email verification is done with the help of a, a node mailer library so now i'll show you what happens when we have a successful credentials so i'll just go with my credentials here and the password will be so submit yeah so if your credentials are correct the password is correct then this is the dashboard page you are going to see so here you can have uh, uh, my name sorry your name uh, email address and you can also update your details uh, below here like changing password or anything and you can add anything you want in this uh, website and this is just going to a project with a authentication feature so if after dashboard you can have any cards or any details of your own personal website you can add uh, this project to your resume also having that particular security is there and if i show you another interesting thing if i click on this inspect and have this application tab and here this is the data that is being stored with this application that is this is the like some kind of string right this is nothing but an encrypted string this string contains my name my email address my every my details so no one can trace it out uh, what is my password and everything my details so the only way they can get is they need to get this uh, string and if you go to the json website that is a jwt website and if you scroll to this official jwt website if you scroll down here and paste your string here then you can know that the what is my user id what is my uh, name what is the email and when was it created all this but the password will not be uh, displayed here and it will also show you what kind of uh, algorithm what kind of uh, payload what kind of signature we are following this was already been discussed in the introduction video of what is jwt that is a jwt token will be having a three parts header payload as well as a signature so here you can see it says invalid signature because while you're logging only a key token will be given with that token only uh, you will be redirected to the website with the correct signature if there's an invalid signature you won't be redirected to this dashboard so this is how we are going to have additional step of security in our project and this is the jwt that is json web token npm library you can find this on npmjs.com website so this is the uh, npm i json web token is a command to install json web token and you can go through all this stuff like uh, this official repository home page what is the uh, documentation of it how to use this you can go through it in your free time so this is going to be our project uh, of this course that is authentication mon stack authentication project with jwt now simply i'm gonna log out and it will again redirect me to the home page that is login screen page now if i check 
uh, token JWT token you can see that it's been disappeared so whenever you log out the token will be automatically get deleted for the security purpose so this is the safest and security way to use JWT authentication so from the next section we'll start our project how to do that and how we are going to implement that welcome back guys in the previous video we've seen demo of our project that is Mernstack authentication project with JWT and in this video we are going to set up our project with the help of front end that is we are nothing but react so first we are going to create react and then we are going to have a node application also and after that we are going to connect it so this video will be about creating or setting up front end application so the command for creating a react application is npx create react app and you can name it whatever you want but i'm going with client because client is nothing but it's a front end uh, for a website so when i click enter it will start downloading the packages for me so what are the available packages whatever the boilerplate code which is need to get started with our react application that will be downloaded to your computer so this download uh, depends upon your internet connection as well as your laptop because whatever all the downloading packages will be obviously depends upon your internet connection and the kind of uh, adaptability your laptop as if it's having a very good high-end processor laptop then it will be downloaded in few minutes so i'll see you once this uh, gets downloaded and uh, i'll see you once this is completed all right the package has been downloaded and this is the react application that's front-end application we have set up now all we need to go is we need to go into our respective code editors that it may be atom it may be vs code so i'm going to use vs code so command for that is code space dot so with the help of this command it will directly open this directory in vs code so click enter and it will automatically open in vs code so yes i want to trust this folder and you can see client is a folder and these are all the files which have been pre-downloaded or pre-created with the help of that npx command so now we need to do is we need to open terminal and we need to start this run this application right so for that is npm start so before going to uh, type npm start you need to be in client folder because client folder is nothing but it's a front end folder right so you need to run a front end application so you need to go into this client folder and then npm start and so it takes some time to compile all our code and it will open this website in the default browser whatever you use that is it may be chrome it may be edge whatever so it my default browser is google chrome so it's opening in google chrome so before it compiles and uh, get started we'll just go with some code and the main file which we required is app.js because this is like a heart of our react application because whatever you write in this file itself it will be compiled and it will shown up in the website so if you can see a successful message is compiled successful and you can view client in the browser with the help of this uh, link that is localhost 3000 or it's a nothing but this is my localhost ip so now let's get into the browser and this is the first initial react website you will be given with the help of that downloaded packages so now we are going to change a lot of it because we need application like this with the background of this color with a card and all those so we are going to change uh, many things here so first of all to do that let's clear all this code because we won't be needing uh, this background color or that react logo in our project so let's delete and if i now save it it will automatically uh, rerun the server and if we check so there's nothing in our web page it's completely clean because we haven't written any kind of code so 
this is how we are going to create front end react application with the help of npx command and these are the folders or files we'll be getting after that so in the next video we'll see how to uh, get started with node that is backend hello and welcome back guys in the previous video we have seen how to set up our front end part that is a react application with the help of npx create react app command and now in this video we are going to set up our node application that is backend part so we are going to minimize this client which is of front end and now we have two ways to establish or initiate our node application that is in command prompt we need to run a few commands right to create a node application so we have two ways one is to you can stop the service and uh, create a node application or else if you use vs code we have this split terminal functionality so if you click on the split terminal you will be having two terminals in this vs code and now the code for initiating our node application is npm init so once you click on it so sorry it was typo so once you click npm init and click enter it will ask you for a few details like what is the name of our application who is going to be owner and what is the git repository all those kind of things so you can just go with the default ones so package name yeah this is what i want to go with version let it be one point uh, description you can give as it is a authentication project or anything is uh, which you can understand and if i click another enter entry point i don't want to be entry pointers index.js i want to be entry pointers service.js so it can be your personal preference some people may go with node.js server.js index.js it's up to you i'm going with server.js and test commands you can just ignore this git repository again if you want to give a repository which you want to create for this application which we are going to do in a for uh, lectures you can give a repository uh, link here and again enter and keywords you may be calling uh, having keywords of auth jwt react more many kind of things you can give keywords for this application here and again if i enter author you can give your name here so i'll give my name here because whoever creates the project they will be called as author so again if i click enter uh, license isc and it will ask for the final confirmation that is this okay this is a json uh it has created for us with the input we have given so is this okay for us yes yeah, sure so now you can see the package.json file has been created with the details which we have given so we have told that our main file is server.js right you can go ahead anytime and change these uh details so the server.js is uh, lacking here so we are going to create that file so server.js so this is the node file and this is a node related package.json file and obviously this client where we are having front end related files so we have started the server in a front end part so now we are going to start so in the back end part as well that is in server.js so before that we need a few npm packages needs to be downloaded so we'll download those npm packages so with the help of npm i which is npm install and the name of a package the first one will be obviously express so in the future lectures as we are going or as we are implementing the project we are going to download package then and there itself so if i click enter the express package will be installed uh, in the node.js file so if you can see here there's no dependencies right and once the express has been successfully installed we have this dependencies uh, object and in that we have express version so for now we'll close this uh, minimize this client folder let's go back to our server.js and here we need to import our express so const express and we are going to require some express because that is what we have downloaded with the help of command so we have imported the express and now we need to have this another line as 
const app is equal to express so this will initialize a express module or express uh, libraries and after that we are going to start our server right so that app dot listen and here we can give uh, our port whatever it may be so in future we are going to download a package called dot env so in that we are going to give our port also in confidential way i'll explain what is dot env and how we are going to use it so before that uh, we'll just declare a variable as port equal to 5000 because mostly uh, node.js servers will be get started on 5000 port only and react.js servers will get started on 3000 uh, port so here i'm going to give my port as first parameter and then there's a arrow function which will log me the details that is server started on and here i am using template literals so i may be start using this variable port and it's throwing me error here so i can remove this semicolon to ignore that so once i save this file now i need to uh, start this server right so in react we have this npm start and in node we can just go with node and name of your file that is server or index so node server so it says that server started on 5000 or else in an easy way we can have another npm library that is node mon so if you are already uh, aware or if you are already installed node mon in your pc then just you need to go with node mon server so what this node mon server node mon is once you start application with help of nodemon command so whatever changes you do like uh, server started on port so whatever changes you do if i just save this file again the server will get started you no need to go into this command prompt and type node server every time so that will uh, save our time and it's not which we want to save so now we've completed setting up installing our front end part and back end part in the next video we'll see how to establish a mongodb database welcome back guys in the previous videos we've seen setup of front end and back end as well in this video we are going to see how to create database uh, in mongodb and also connect to the database so without any further ado let's get started so you need to go into the chrome and go to the mongodb website so this is a mongodb website you need to go into if you don't have account just uh, create your account and sign with your account so as i'm already having my account in mongodb i'll going to just sign with my credentials so uh, i want to log in with my google account so once the google is enabled i'll log in using my google account so it is already redirecting to the website so this is the website you will be redirecting to if you have a successful uh, setup of your account and we can see here right you need to create as i don't have any databases it's asking me to create a database so let's get started with creating a database so i'm clicking on this build database and this mongodb atlas we have a few services like free service and a paid service as we are learning and beginner stage we can go with a free service so i'm creating on free one and it will ask me for a few details which i need to put in uh, yeah free and you can select any of this and yeah uh, and the region you want to select is which is near to you so not all regions will be listed down here you can select which is nearer to you and just go down and you can just create cluster so once you create this you'll be able to start creating databases so this may take a few seconds depending on our, our internet connection but once you have successfully set up your 
database then it will be easy to reload and receive any kind of data so now he is asking me to create a user for this database so i'll just go with user you can create any kind of username and password also so i'll just auto generate password and have it copied to my clipboard now click on create user so with the help of this user only we are going to uh, create read or do any operation in the database so once the user creating is finished then you will be proceeded with another dashboard to create a database as meanwhile it's getting uh, connected to the user and database so let's just go to the our vs code and here we need to install few packages so first of all stop our server and now in node.js we need to download mongoose package because with the help of mongoose package only we are going to install or reuse database so npm i and name of the package that is mongoose oh let's click enter and it will download all the required information from mongoose library so let's just go into our browser and see whether it's a user created or not yeah i think the user has been created yeah you can see down below right user and a password has been uh, created now if you go to the next step this is the uh, another most important step is this network access from where you want to access this database so as we are in developing stage and we want to access it from a local storage i'm going to click on this add my current ip so what this does is whenever i want to receive or whenever i want to connect to the database i should be in this uh, local host ip so it won't work in a different ips so in developing stage it's okay to work in local host but if you are in deploying or if you are in a production type of scenarios then you need to go with another like all access provided so now we are done with creating user as well as uh, uh, network access then we can click on this finish and close so it says congratulations on setting up access rules so go to databases here we need to create and connect our database so first of all we are going to create sorry this has already been created right so we are going to go with now we want to connect our database to our application so we need to click on this connect button here and it will ask few of the methods like which method you want to connect it to so we want to connect it using two methods using your uh, application and also our mongodb compass so because every time we don't want to go into this website go into this url go and in, check into this and that so instead of doing that we can directly uh go into mongodb compass which is installed in your pc and you can check all the databases from there so first of all we'll go with this mongodb campus and if you see here this is the url link you'll be getting now open compass in your pc so let's just try opening it so mongodb compass this is application you need to download it from the official mongodb website if it's downloaded well and okay installed then just you need to paste this url in this application then it will directly connect to that website so it's loading let's see whether our mongoose package is installed or not yeah the mongoose package has been installed and let's just start our server so nodebon server and it should give us a message that server started on port 5000 yeah that's fine so here you can see right it is ask for asking for a url that is our mongodb connection url so if i paste here and also i need to give password here whenever you are creating user it tells you to create a password right as i have opted for a 
auto password that auto password i need to paste here so this is the auto password and now i need to click on connect so that database will be connected to your local mongoose compass so here i am going to create database so click create database and name of the database let's just give as udemy auth app and collection name you can give now or you can give it later also but i'm giving it now because we are going to have a users uh, collection right because that is where we are going to store users data so click on create database and that will create the database with a collection of users so you can see this is the udemy auth app our database and if i go into that a users collection has been created so now we need to connect the database which we have created to our application that is to this code so before doing that we need to have a set of file structure so we are going to create a file structure for that so we cannot just have our contents or database related strings in our server.js we need to have it in separate file and also in an encrypted format so have that encrypted format we need to use another package called dot env so npm i dot env you can just google this out and you'll know what dot env is so npm dot env so if i search with this it will give you a result of what is dot envs so this is nothing but a environment variable so what is environment variable so if if you are having any kind of credentials or if you are having any kind of uh, strings or data which you don't want to see by the user or see by any kind of application then you are going to encrypt it by using this dot env extension so i'll show you how to do that so let's install this package So once this is installed, we can start using dot env. Yeah, and let's just start the server. The server is started as well. And if you check in package.json, we have three dependencies. That is three packages which we have installed so far. That is Express, which will help us to write Node.js code, and dot env is for the sensitive data which we want which we don't want to expose in our code and the mongos is a library which helps us to connect to the database so here we'll connect we'll create a folder which will be as a config because this would be the configuration folder and in this configuration folder i'll have db.js now we need to have the mongo mongoose uh variable right so let's just require mongoose so const mongoose equal to require and the mongoose and the mongoose is the library which we have uh, downloaded and installed right so mongoose and now we need to write a function to create to the uh, to connect to the database so for that const connect db this is the function name you can go with uh, anything that just uh, it's a self explanatory right we are using this file to connect our database which we have created so con connect db and this will be the un asynchronous function and arrow function added to it now here i'll have a try catch block because uh, not every time the database will connect successfully right so if it's successfully it's well and fine and you'll get a message that a database has been connected if something goes wrong like if there's no internet connection uh, when you are going to connect or if you are having some kind of issues then it will throw you a message that database is not reachable or not connected so we need to have both the scenarios in our case so try catch block so in try we'll be having that string which we got from mongodb website so i'll have as con equal to and await because whenever you're using asynchronous functions async keyword you need to have this await keyword as well and now mongoose dot connect 
so inside this mongoose dot connect we need to give string but what i've told is we have we are going we are not going to expose our string or any sensitive data right so now we need to create a env file so dot env so this file will not be readed by any application sorry eh, by the user or anyone it will only be encrypted to your application so here i am going to write as mongo uri and the string which we have copied from database so this is the string and here also we need to give our password our password and at the end we need to specify our database our database was udemy auth app so we need to save this another important factor you need to keep in mind is whenever you, you are making any changes in dot env file you need to restart your application that is you need to restart your node server so again i'm restarting my node server and here how am i going to access this mongo URA variable from dot env file to db.js it's simple we are having this keyword called process dot env dot and the name of our variable that was mongo underscore uri so mongo underscore uri it's a variable which i have created it's your wish you can create it with any name for this application now we'll check with this variable if con variable returns true or any positive result we need to throw a message called it is successfully connected to database so if con is successful then i'll have this log statement which says that mongodb connected successfully and we'll have a else statement also because i've said not every time a database connection will be successful we also need to deal with when it was it's not successful we need to throw a message as well so we can say that not connected please try again this can be any custom messages you want so this is done and we need to have this catch phrase also if there's any network connectivity or if there's any uh, network connectivity in a mongodb database website also then the catch phrase will be invoked so here i'll have another log statement which says as something went wrong so you can also observe that whenever i'm writing and saving my file the node server is automatically getting restarted there's no hard code in it and after that if there's any wrong we need to throw this message and the process should stop right to not continue we are having this process dot exit so i'm saving this and now we need to see a message here if it's connected successfully or not okay we are not getting any messages because we have not included anything about database in our server.js as i've told server.js is a main file for node.js and in front end in client we have app.js that is the heart of the front end so in similarly in backend server.js is a heart of the backend so before exporting we need to have this statement below so module dot exports equal to a name of the function which we want to export this is connect db and now we are going to import it into our server.js file so here we need to type as const connect db equal to require from the location which we have uh, created that file that is in config folder db so now it will the file is imported successfully and we are 
another step we need to do is we need to configure the env also right so because we have just used the env but we have not specified anywhere that it should also configure so we need to require the package first so dot env and we need to have this config function so config function is nothing but it will start running the dot env package in your application so this is saved and we need to call this function right call connect db so connect db and i'm calling this function so save and now below you need to see the message if it's successful or not so server started on port and you got message right mongodb connected successfully so it means we have written correct code to connect to our database if there's any wrong like if there's no internet connection or if there's any network related issues then you will get as not connected or something went wrong so this video we have created a database we have connected database to compass application and also our application and now the connecting to application has been successfully done from the next section we are going to start our project from front end onwards welcome back guys in the previous section we've seen how to create and set up our application in back end front end as well as creating and connecting database to our application now in this section we are going another step and creating a front end part that is we are going to have a pages login page register page and another kind of pages so let's just go into the front end part and in the source file folder we need to create a folder called pages or screens anything you want so pages and inside these pages i'll be having few of the files that is login.js for our login purpose and let's just create another file register.js and dashboard dot js you can have any number of pages in your website uh, you wish and we'll close few of these files which are opened in our vs code and we need to have some boilerplate code here right so this is a command rfc is the shortcut uh, if you have installed extension in vs code for a shortcut then you will be having this rfc so once you enter this rfc this is a boilerplate code which is initial code it, it doesn't have anything it will just have a starter function so this is the function it will create with that uh, snippet so rfc so each login register and dashboard pages have been created and now what i need to do is i need to import it in the main file that is app.js file as we are not using this logo we can remove that line and now we need to import login login page register page and dashboard page so register dashboard page yeah so now the three pages have been uh, imported into this file now there are few packages which we want to install in our front end because in back end we have installed few packages like mongoose to connect to database and dot env to uh, protect our sensitive data likewise we have few packages in front end also that we are going to install so once the compilation is successfully done we are going to install those packages meanwhile we'll have some kind of text here so instead of this div we can have h1 so we are going to change the contents in the each file so this is just for demonstration purpose i'm showing you how it will work once the compilation is successfully done so h1 for all the files as the compilation is done we are going to install few packages so first package will be of a react router dom so react router dom is nothing but it will help us to navigate between the pages because 
in every website whatever website you see it won't have just one single screen right, or one single page it will have multiple pages to able to redirect to the multiple pages in react we are going to use this react router dom package so npm i react router dom you can know about this package more in npmjs.com website so there you will be having a complete documentation how to use and all but don't worry i'll show you how to use this react router dom in our react application once that is successfully installed we are going to import that and we are going to use those and it's successfully installed uh, we are going to start our server that is npm start and let's import that so import import and there are few things which we are, we need to import from react router dom so we are going to import it one by one so first one is browser router so browser router as router as we don't want to use browser router big name i'm changing it to as a router so we can use this router and another one we want to use is routes and the last one would be route so in the, while developing application if we require any kind of packages from react router dom we are going to mention it here as well so it's being compiled and run so let's just go back to our vs code and from react router dom here we need to mention that whatever the packages we have uh, imported from react router dom we need to mention here so first of all we need to have this routes So routes is nothing but inside this routes tag only we need to have different pages which we want to redirect to. So this is the like a parent tag. So inside this routes, sorry, it's a router, right? So we need to have a router. So inside this router only we are going to have different kind of pages. So inside this router, whatever all the routes we are having, we need to inscribe in this routes folder so first of all the router is nothing but it will enable us to route to each of our pages so another tag is routes so routes is whatever the routes we are having in this application that should be mentioned inside this tag so the last one is route so here the route is a simple one uh, we need to have each route inside this route so we have one property called path so this path is nothing but if you have this single slash that is a home page and we need to give element like if you go to this single slash what is the element you want to compile or shown to the user so uh, in the slash i want to show login page so login page so inside element also we need to have this jsx format the component so we'll have a similar routes and for register we'll be having as a register and the component will be register register and we'll have another path as dashboard and the element will be dashboard so let's just save it and the compilation is done successfully now let's see what's the output so you can see in the root directory that is if you have just slash so it's slash nothing but it's just a root the first page it will be rendered so slash or without slash it will redirect to localhost 3000 only so it will show you the login page because inside this 
root folder we are having this login page so inside this login page whatever you write it will show there we are having only one h1 text it's because it's showing login text now we want to go into register so register and if i click on register it will show me the register page because inside this register page we are having just h1 and in dashboard we should able to see this h1 of dashboard so we'll confirm that also dashboard so you should be able to see the dashboard so in the further lectures we'll change this because no one will go into the url and change the uh, url right to go into different pages so we are going to create buttons and all in the next videos we are going to create that so user will be able to reroute to the different pages this video will get start creating the login js that is a login component so before creating the components we we will like to use a library called bootstrap so with the help of bootstrap library we can create responsive designs and also a few components we can import from bootstrap so there are two ways to install bootstrap one is using that npm i bootstrap or we can also use cdn so for the time being i'm going to use cdn so cdn is nothing but you can just have that link in your application so bootstrap cdn so if you go into this website and scroll down so this is the first step you can use this npm i bootstrap that will install all the bootstrap related files to your application but here i want to use link so you can it's your wish you can go either by installing using package manager or using this link so when i copy this link i need to paste in public because if i paste it in login.js it will only be useful to login component but it will not be useful to register dashboard or other pages again i need to import them manually so instead of that we can just one time we can paste it here and all the pages will be imported from here so this is the link and the bootstrap has been successfully imported through this link so how do we check that so in bootstrap we have few classes so we'll check with that classes so class name I want to have this bg primary so bg primary is a class name in bootstrap it will give us a background of primary color in bootstrap primary color in bootstrap is blue color so let's see so successfully it's compiled go to our browser we can close this uh, bootstrap window so let's just go to the login page yeah you can see right bg primary has given the background color of blue so that means a bootstrap has been successfully imported using the cdn link and if we check the completed website so we'll remove all the other websites here so if you check the deployed complete website we are having a background of certain color we are having this image we are having this card so we are going to demonstrate exact the same thing in our developing application also so as we have done text testing bootstrap we can remove that uh, class name here we'll remove this h1 tag we'll have a div inside this So inside this div we are going to have different kind of elements so if you see in our website we have a first a text here i captain welcome back right so we are going to have the similar text so we'll use uh, h1 or h2 so h2 would be fine and inside this we'll have this text i captain and this div will have a class name of row so that will give us a responsive kind of thing in bootstrap so row and we are going to have certain kind of bg color 
so bg color is not a class from bootstrap it is a manually created class so we are going to have it in our app.css so app.css we are going to remove all this because uh, we have removed all the boilerplate code at the start itself right so as we are not using any of this classes we can remove it so the class i have mentioned is bg color this is a custom class which we are using in our login.js because we want this kind of background color if you check here we have this text but we don't have any background color so we'll be having that background color in the css file so go to the app.css file and inside this we are going to have background color property so this background color we are going to have dark blue so if i save and go to the website you can see background color has been applied but it's only applied to the h1 or h2 it's not applied to only h1 or h2 it's actually applied to the content when you have the content increased like if you have another few text then the background color will be changed and increased so instead of that we are going to have another property also that is height property it should appear to everything so height we can give as 100 vh so vertical height so if i check that website reload So you can see the background color has been successfully applied but we want to change the uh, text color so you can change the text color using bootstrap or css we are going as we are using uh, bootstrap we are going to change using bootstrap class so i'll give as text white so now it will change to white color so yeah it has changed to white color but we having this horizontal bar right so to avoid that we are going to have another bootstrap property mentioned so what i'll do is i'll give body html or body so all the bodies should not be scrolled horizontally so that's why i'll give as a max width as 100 percent and overflow overflow is a property which will enable or disable the scrolling property so overflow x that means horizontally it should not scroll so i'll have this hidden so that means horizontally we won't be having any scrolling thing so you can see we don't have any kind of horizontal scrolling so again we are going to have few margin paddings all those according to what we have created finally here so firstly we need to have a text center and as well as few margin or padding from top so let's just go into our login js component and here we have another class called okay my battery is running now okay let's just continue text center So if you check this will be text center so far we have done this so this is the completed deployed uh, version here we are going to import this uh, image and call all those so first of all we are going to set some margin paddings all of this let's get back to our vs code first of all we will have some padding from top and bottom and class for that is py that is padding and y is nothing but y margin that is top and bottom and four four is the margin range so let's just check it still not appeared so yeah the code is still compiling so once the compiling is done it will reflect in our website so meanwhile we'll just copy that image which we have seen in the deployed version here so we are going to take this exact uh, picture if you want i'll provide in the resources or you can use whatever you want to paste here so let's get back and this is the image 
SVG I'm having so I'll just copy and paste it in our I'll make another folder here so in this folder I'll have like assets so all assets related to my project will be here so inside this assets I'll paste and this is the file it's in this folder so i'm directly going to paste inside my folder inside this mern client source and assets so here i'll be pasting my online spg and now we need to import that file so import login pick from you can name anything you want but i'm using login pick from uh, we need to go back one step that is in assets inside this we have online dot svg so this has been uh, imported successfully now we need to use this in our uh, login js component so once the compilation is done we'll see whether the change is reflected margin yeah you can see right now the both are having the same margin from top and bottom so now we'll first get started with adding this image and after that this card this is the bootstrap card uh, you feel free to customize this and do in your own way here let's have another div so inside this we'll be having like these two components of first co first part is of picture and second part is of card so here i'll make this div as call of a class call md6 because in bootstrap we'll be having 12 columns and the first column i first six columns i want to occupy this image and the next six columns will be occupied by my bootstrap card inside this i need to have my image here so image tag and source is the one which we have already imported that is login pick so login pick is a uh, image so let's see whether it is working okay this is working but we need to uh, resize this accordingly right so we are going to do that now so let's start giving a uh, width and height so let's start giving width of uh, 450 pixels and even height of 450 pixels so let's see whether okay now the both are of same right so let's uh, start with another component that is our bootstrap card so now the bootstrap card should be of outside this div because six columns will occupy this picture and other six columns should be occupied by by my uh, card it can be six or any number of columns so i'll go with the card component so here the class name i'll go with md4 because i don't want to occupy it's completely six columns and i'm gonna give a padding of five uh, with the margin of three and inside this i'll have another div so that div will have a card with a padding of three and bg white so i need to have a white background here so inside this i'll have one h2 class which will tell me that it's a login page so let's check okay we got a starting kind and this login should be on left and we need few uh, text elements and the submit button okay we are making a good progress so we'll continue the same now we need to have this form tag and inside this form tag we don't need this action button because we are going to handle in this page itself with a submit button so on submit so inside this we can give our function name so we can give as login submit and for the time being let's just create a empty function down here so const login submit equal to and this arrow function will be having here 
uh, we will fill the logic of the submit button later but first we need to uh, have this login that is username as well as password so here we'll have a div so this div, this is a bootstrap div i'm going to give a form control here so class name form group you can make your customized form also like having uh, other kind of fields i'm just going with the simple email address password and just a submit button so i'll have a h5 which says to enter email address and after that i need to have an input here right so input and type will be no type will be of email not text because email will contain uh, at the rate and a specific domain not just any set of characters so the type should be of email and after that uh, we'll have a class name of form control and we'll be also having a placeholder uh, which says enter email and also we'll be having this required tag uh, so that the user cannot submit unless or until they have something in this input field so as we are done with this we'll go for another div div of form group so here i'll be having another h5 which says that i need to enter password and similarly i'll have an input and this time instead of text i'll have a password type and we'll have a similar class name because bootstrap has this kind of class to customize your field and after that i'll have a placeholder to enter password and then this is also a required field unless user types the password you cannot uh, switch to the dashboard or the home page and here we'll have another tag here like auto focus i'll tell you what auto focus is when we are having this demo what auto focus is when you are firstly launching your page it will have focus on that input field so we'll be seeing that demo in a short so let's save it once the compilation is done yeah it's done and you can see i just opened this website and it automatically is focused on this email address field so that is what auto focus means now we need to add some margins as a password and email are not having any kind of margin so what i'll do is i'll give a margin of top four so now yeah now it's good okay now we need to add a button as well as this link if the user is not registered he should be able to go to the register page so what i'll do is i'll have another div here for that submit button so div and inside this i'll have uh, this button tag type will be of submit so whenever user clicks on this the immediate action will be of submit and the logic goes to our login submit function so submit and the text should be of submit so let's see okay so we need to have this text center and also a bit of a margin so we are going to have that so class name margin 5 and we'll have a class name here also to be in exact center so text center now let's see okay now it looks fine of the margin but we need to customize this button as well so here i'll have a customized class uh, which says submit btn so this is not a bootstrap class this is a, in a, we need to define that class so i'm going to go with app.css and here as a class we should have this dot submit btn 
so first we'll have this border of zero so let's check okay still the compiling is going on so once the compilation is done uh, the border will be disappeared so yeah you can see the border has been disappeared now we'll have a background color padding all that as as well so background color will go with the same as about the dark blue and also we'll have a padding of 10 from top and bottom and 60 px from left and right and the text on the button should be off white because on the dark blue black will not be that visible so let's see okay now we got let's check with our final project okay we are having some kind of border radius here so we'll try to implement the same here so border radius let's go with 5px and yeah now this looks the same and fine okay now we'll go with this link here uh, let's go into login.js and out of this form we need to have this link so the react router dom link it should say not registered click here and here i'll have a class name so class name text primary you can give your own color of class which you want to appear in the project i'm going with the text primary and also i have, want to have this link in the center of the page so text center and the margin my 3 let's save and see the result okay now we are having almost the same kind of page not registered click here so if i click here okay nothing is happening let's check our code okay i don't have the two property here so two it should go to register a route okay now let's try it out yeah now it's going to register so we have completed the designing of a login page in the next video we'll going with a register page come back guys in the previous video we have completed designing a login page now we are going with register page so let's go our to our visual studio and start doing that so this is a register.js page which uh, which is a page for this slash a register route so we are going to build this page in this video so first of all we need to remove this tag here so h1 will have a div instead of this h1 so div and the class name will be first we'll have this row so that uh, we'll be having columns in our web page and now i'll go with the background color of bg color remember which we've created a class for this in app.css here this one so let's save and you can see that immediately the background has turned into dark blue now we'll see what's the next change okay it should be i captain no this is a login page right so we'll check in the register okay in register page we have i captain register here and this card and the picture so we'll try to implement the same we'll have a h2 here which says i captain register here and we need to have a class names for this as well so class name it should be of text white which gives us a white color text and it should be in center so that's why text center and i'll have a padding from bottom one and now we'll go with the card here so we'll have another div here so a div which has a class name 
the class name i'll have a five columns for that card so it's your wish if you want a small card if you give a call md4 and 3 also if you card a much larger card you can go with call md7 8 so on and i'll have this at the center all the content should be in the center and the card should be margin from top five and padding also it should be of five with x-axis padding also it should be five so another div here i'll give this card so class name card and in the card everything should be of padding three of all sides with a background of white so this is just an example you can customize on your own customization of how to look your project and how to look your card it should be your uh, preference of what color you should be using and what margin spacing you should be using this is just my uh, example video so after that i'll have a, another h2 which says register and similarly we'll have a class name also to have a look on this so class name padding from top two and in x-axis four so let's see how this is looking okay it's fine so why it is in center the card is center because we don't have anything on the right hand side if we add a pick on right hand side immediately uh, this card will go into left hand side so what we'll do here is we'll have another div here so div so this div is for five columns and this div i'll give for six columns at least so call md6 and we need to import the picture also right so we'll import login pick from the folder sorry the import typo so you need to be taking care of all the spellings and all, everything so the import it, it is in assets so what we'll do is we'll go back one folder and in assets we have a file name called online svg so we'll be going with that only online dot svg so what we are going to do is here we are going to have that image so img the source will be of login pick so let's see how it's looking in our browser okay yeah as i've said the register has gone into a left hand pick is in right hand side if you want to keep it this way like this large you can keep or else you can go with the smaller version of it so for for time being let's just go with a similar size we are, we are going to focus more on this card like now we are going to have all the fields like name email password confirm password and submit to have this image as a responsive i'm going to add a few classes for this image image fluid so this class will be of responsive so now we need to go into building form so here we'll have a form tag so form tag and the action we can remove that instead of action we are going with on submit so on submit and we'll hand the, handle this submit so handle submit is a function name i'm going to give and for meanwhile i need to have a function for this as well so const handle submit handle submit and i need to have a arrow function for this similar to what we did in login if you check here we have done the same thing so we'll be writing this logic afterwards when we are connected with the backend doing the stuff with the backend so for time being uh, it will be a just empty function so this is a form and i'll have a class also for this so class name i'll have a top margin of five 
with the x axis margin of 4 <coughs> now i need to have a name email address password and confirm password so we need to have a four divs for that div dot form group and let's just copy same thing another three times because we'll be having the same three fields this is for name and this is for email this is for password and this is for confirm password okay now we'll directly jump into the code so inside this div i'll have a h5 text which says to enter me this name and after that we need to have this input which should be of type text because the name is nothing but it's just a characters a string so we can go with type of text and class name of form control after this class name now we need to have a placeholder to let the user know what he should be typing inside this field so enter name after that it have the required tag also don't worry we'll be having form validation in the next coming videos uh, we'll be doing much more validation than just required so till then we are going with this time being Greek validation of just required and auto focus as well similarly we'll be having for email so h5 email address address input field for email the type should be of email class name of form control placeholder should be like enter email this is also the required field like user should not go through unless he enters and submit this field and after that we have this password section sorry password div so this is the password input field of type password and class name of form control placeholder placeholder enter password after that this should be the required and another div is for confirming password so confirm password input field of type password again because both confirm password and password should not be visible to the other users when typing so class name of form control placeholder of enter confirm password okay now let's just check how it's appearing okay we need to have this uh, margin from top for every other div we'll go with that first so here mt4 and for the password also mt4 for confirming password also we go with mt4 now okay now it looks good and also we need to have this submit button as well as the link here down so we'll proceed and doing the same after this field i am going to have another div to have this uh, submit button i'll have a class name of text center so that the button will be in the center of the page so in the center of the card div now what i'll do is i'll have a 
button tag which says to submit submit and i should have a class name also right for this so class name it will be having a class name of submit button which we have customized it with margin top of five and this button should be of type submit so i'll give type as submit along with that as the submit button is completed now we need to give this link so again this is a react router dom link react router dom link and here we'll be having as already register so if the person is already registered then he should be redirected to login so click here to login yeah and uh, for this we need to have a two field in the class name so we'll have a class name of text primary text center to be in the center of the card and a margin of in the y-axis of three and now for the two field i'll have this root that is nothing but a login so we'll check yeah now we can see a name email register password and submit if the user is already registered then if you click on this he should be added to the login and if a user is already having account you he should be able to enter and click on submit if the user doesn't have that then he'll go into this register page so this is it uh, it's a front end part is completed designing the login page as well as a register page so in the next videos we'll be seeing how to handle like form validation we'll be doing a secure form validation how to secure your protocols and as well as this form so see you in the next video so guys as i've told at the end of the video in the last video that we are going to have a form validation a secure way so this is the video about it so in this video we are going to know how to use react hook form this is the npm library which is free to use and you can install this library with this command npm i react hook form so this uh, package will be using with the help of our hooks we have used it use effect hook right so similarly we'll be having a use form hook with the help of that customized hook we are going to have a form validation so that means user cannot log in with just a normal credentials it like he should be having uh, at least 14 characters in his name or at least uh, 10 characters in his password a strong password weak password so all kind of form validation we are going to cross out in this video so first of all what we are going to do is we are going to install this package in our project so this is copied to our clipboard now let's go into our project before installing any packages we need to stop this job so i'm stopping this job and need to have this npm i react hook form so once you click enter it will start downloading all the packages related to react hook form so this is one of the way to have a form validation in the easiest way you can write it from scratch also but using libraries will save you a lot of time so once the installation is completed i'm going to show you how to use this react hook form and do the form validation while registering so what it is is when entering a password or when entering any kind of fields the user will be having a certain kind of instruction that is a user should be having at least a set of characters of name and password also you should be having one uh, uppercase lowercase special character and uh, as well as a number so all these comes under form validation so if you provide this kind of features in your application then that means you're have building a strong application with the security that is user cannot just log in or register with the normal credentials like which which are weak credentials so the installation is done now what we are going to do is we need to run the uh this application also right so we'll run back the application so npm start is the command for that so in the background as it compiles and runs the application for us 
will be importing few packages related to our react hook form so one of it is use form so use form from react hook form as you've already got your suggestion here that means it has successfully installed so if you are familiar with hooks that is or use state and use effect this is similarly kind of hook which starts with use so it's still loading in the background now what we need to do is we need to have a okay it's loading so if you want to know anything about this package the best way is to read documentation on it so if you scroll down it says a quick start we should be importing this use form in our application and we need to have this line that is const register handle form state errors and use form so don't worry i'll show you and make you understand how and how we should be building this application with the help of react hook form so let's just go back to our application and what we do is we need to paste that which we have copied from the documentation so that means register handle submit form and use form so if you have a little bit knowledge on hooks that is use state and use effect what use state is you need to have a variable and if the variable value changes you are going to set another variable also so that means the two variables and in the kind of array and you will have this use state here so similarly we'll be having use form the values of register handle submit and form state of headers so this handle state is nothing but you need to handle your uh, submit right so whenever user enters all the fields all the data and if it clicks on submit you need to handle that submit right so that is what this handle submitted so i'll show you how to do that so here we are having on submit right so here we need to make changes yeah handle submit is fine but if this is a function it will get triggered by the react hook form if you click on submit inside this we need to have another function we can give a function anything that can register submit so why are we having another function is this handle submit is not our function now it is not asked to write like not having logic it is now the react hook form function now it will just say that whatever having value in the handle submit that you should follow registering that you should follow the follow the logic so that's why we are having another function as a parameter for handle submit so now we can remove this handle submit and instead go with register submit register submit so now you can see the errors are gone and the form state is nothing but whenever you have some kind of errors like if user is typing only two or three letters of use element and clicking on submit these uh the form state gives that user a error saying that you have entered only three or four letters the minimum letters you should be having is six letters like any kind of it's your uh, instruction to put like how many characters you need to have in your form now as the use form uh, hook is done now what we are going to do is we need to handle our form like a form validation we are going to do each and every field so our first will go with the name and here what we'll do is at the end of uh, this input tag we need to have this curly braces and this three, three dots so three dots is nothing but it's a spread operator and register so why did we have this register so register is nothing but this is the use form what you have in the documentation we are using the same thing the register so whatever the data which we enter in our input field that is going to handle by this register method so this is the register function that is a method function and now first field is the variable name which we want to give so what is this so if you give 
first field a variable name so whenever user enters and submits the field in that variable the data will be stored for example if i type uh, xyz in this input then the user variable will have the value of xyz so for that usage we are going to give this variable here you can give anything you want like a name and any kind of that but i'm going with a user so the first field of the register is nothing but a variable to store your values from the input field so the second second parameter here is it's like optional parameter but i'm going to give us the required so required should be true uh, i've said that the second parameter is optional parameter right so it's optional because if you don't give any kind of second parameter also it justly uh, runs your application but as we told at the start of this project that we are going to have the form validation like it should be have certain kind of securities like minimum length of the name minimum length of the password so we are going to give the second parameter also and we are having this min length property here so min length minimum username should have six characters that is six st the string should be have the six digits and after that we are going to uh, if the user has not uh, entered six a character string or the user has submitted without entering uh, any kind of data in the field it should hand the, handle the error also right so for that kind of purpose we are using another property from here called this errors so what we'll do here is errors dot and user it should say from which uh, variable you want to give the error so if the user entered his name we need to give from user only right so errors dot user if the errors dot user is there like if there are any kind of errors in the user variable then we need to throw some kind of text so in the p variable p tag i'll be throwing that error so class name i'll be having text danger with is nothing but a text in a red color so whenever the error is occurred you should show the user in a red color so that immediately captures the user attention and after that i'll have a margin from top and what is the error i want to give i should throw a error name should be of at least six characters so this error the input we have written and the error also we have handled if the input doesn't go in our way so similarly we'll have a email address password and the confirm password field also will be having the similar kind of form validation here after required we need to have this object kind of thing with three dots that is a spread operator and register method so inside this register method first we need to give our variable name which should store this input so first will be of email i'm going with the email name so this email variable will store whatever the user enters in this input field and the second parameter is optional parameter which i'm going to give required as true and let's just get this down as we are going to have another parameter also and yeah now we are going to have a, another parameter as required is true we are going to have the pattern for this so what this pattern is it is simple regex pattern if you find on internet if you look, just google it what is a regex, a regex pattern for email address you will be getting that or else i'll just attach uh, for this video as a resource you can get from there as well so a pattern a regex pattern is nothing but 
uh, each character there should be a validation like a uh, first six characters should be off of alphabet and after that they should be having one at least one at the rate and after that you should have a domain name and then a dot and after that you should you should have dot com or dot in any kind of that so reject reject pattern is nothing but the your code will go through this pattern whether the user has entered the correct data or not so i'm going to give that pattern here so this is the pattern for email address don't worry i'll be providing you this pattern in a resource of this video now we need to handle errors also right for this uh, email if the user enters wrong email or if the user doesn't enter the email instead of he enters just a string so we'll have this object kind of thing and errors dot email so if there are errors in this email variable then we need to have this p tag which says please check and enter correct email uh, we should have a class for this as well so class name text danger so that the text should be in red color and from top i should have a margin of one so yeah it's done now we need to handle this password also here we need to have this object of javascript three dots of spread operator register and the function the first uh, parameter is the variable which you want to store this input field data and after that required should be true and then after i'm going to have this pattern similar to email we'll be having a pattern for password also like uh, for a strong password for weak password or a okay password so there are many patterns available on the google if you want to search you can search and get it your own pattern also uh, like it should at least have a one special character one uppercase one lowercase and at least it should be having this many digits and also with a numerical one so it is a combination of all the instructions and restrictions this pattern will be created so i'm going to paste that pattern here and we need to handle the errors so the errors dot password if the any kind of errors are there in the password then i need to get this displayed on the website that it should have password should be of length password be of length 6 to 15 so why how it's no the password should be of 6 to 15 because if you see in this pattern i said the password should be of at least eight so if you enter above eight digits it, it is okay so that's why i gave six to fifteen and after that i need to have another instruction also uh, saying that it should have a uppercase a lowercase and a numerical also so what i'll do is as this accepts uh, only one uh, tag we need to have a div here so i'll provide a div here So this is the div and inside this div I'll have this paragraph tag. So now it won't throw me any error. So wherever you want you need to have at least only one parent component and here I'll have another p tag which says 
should contain at least one uppercase lowercase number and a special character so this is done for password similarly we will be having the same in confirm password also so instead of typing again what we'll do is we'll have the same thing pa input field and the errors let's just copy and paste it here so we need to do few of the changes for confirming password should be of type password form and the placeholder should be of confirm password so confirm password are yeah, required and the variable should be of c password not just password and yeah everything should be fine now so let's check in our website so this is the login now we need to go into register yeah here let's just give a four uh, letters i'll give my name b and email address i'll just i won't give the email but i'll just type out something like qwerty and the password also i'll just give a numerical password i'm just giving here one two threes if you are questioning about it and if i click on submit if first it will ask me it should have a at the rate at the end so at the rate so i'll have a gmail.com so if i click on submit then it says name should be of at least six letters so if i click uh, ha have a six letters in that then this error will be disappear so what i'll do is i'll type my full name so you can see as the six letters uh, restriction is gone the error also gone so similarly if i type a correct password here like a strong password with a length of six to 15 and one uppercase one lowercase one number and special character so let me give that strong password so you can see that error is gone now so it's just that easy to do a form validation with the help of npm so i'll have the same password here also and if i click submit now no errors and also it won't get submitted because we haven't written any kind of logic in our code so once our database is connected we once we create our models and database is connected and we write anything in backend then we are going with submit logic so as we have seen if we type anything and click on submit we are getting text in the black color so what i'll do is i'll have this in class name text danger similar thing for all the other p tags so i'll just copy paste for everything text danger text danger text danger so now whenever we enter so for example we'll re refresh and enter the values again so i'll give just a b and my email address password i'll just give some random password which is not a strong one and now when i click on submit it should throw me errors in red text i click on submit so you can see it throwing me error in red text so this of form validation is done so until user having strong credentials you won't be registering the user so in upcoming videos we will see how to do how to connect the backend with the frontend and also registering our user
welcome back to a new section in the previous section what we have done is we have completely designed our front end that is login page register page and also included our fam form validation with the help of npm library so now what we are going to do is now we are going to create a model in the back end so for that purpose i'm going to minimize our client which is a front end uh, for this video we are not going to work with front end so i'm just closing that folder and this is the server.js which is our uh, main heart of the node.js backend file and what i'll do is i'll create another folder here for models so i'll explain what model is so model is nothing but it is just a schema for any particular database like in a database you will be having many documents right so if you are having users document then user should have these particular fields like user should be having a user id user should be having his name email address password and a set of fields you should be having so unless or until user is not entered these particular values the data will not be submitted into database like it is some kind of a schema so similarly in if you are having uh, any kind of e-commerce website then that database the cart the items will be having the item number item name item uh, price a uh, manufacturer date uh, all tax all related so that is a schema so whenever the, you are in uh, when you click on submit or do any kind of activity related to backend it will first check the schema whether in the schema the variable is there or not if it is there then it will successfully go and add to the database so now what we'll do is we'll create a user model first so user model dot js so in node.js we've already installed a mongoose right so we can just import that so const mongoose equal to require mongoose const user schema you can name this as anything i'm naming it according to the convention the user schema and we can get the schema from mongoose so mongoose dot schema so it is already suggesting that if you are using vs code and this is a method in this we are going to have the object so whatever the variables like whatever the user should have those are all we are going to specify here so user the first object is user like a user should be having a name right so we are having it as a user and the type should be of string so as i've told priorly this is a schema so every field should uh, we are going to denote which type and all if you are familiar to mysql there also we'll be creating a table right so while creating a table we are going to give like each column what is the type it is going to be like if it is id we are going to be with integer if it is a name we are going with string and so on so this is the name so that i'm going with the type of string and i'll have this trim also so trim is nothing but trim is true so trim is nothing but when you uh, submit any kind of form like submit uh, this is, in our case is a user is name right so when you click on submit entering the name it will remove all the spaces before the text and after the text so which we no need right if anything is between then it's fine but at the start of the text and the and at the end of the text we are not going to require any kind of spaces so it just remove the spaces for us and after that this is going to be a required one so required true so we have completed one of the field now user we are going to have email so this should be also have type string we are trimming for this also it should not have any kind of prior and after spaces so true a required 
would be also true and after that we are going to store user password also right in the database so password it should be also a type of string so string we are going to trim this as well and then required should be true and after that we are going to store another field also like is verified whether the user is verified or not so by default the verified uh, field will be false because unless user verified himself that should be in false state right so by default it will be in false state once the user verifies it will turn from false to true so this is the you verified field i was talking about so type would be of boolean because boolean is a type uh, which stores true and false and after that i'm going to give this default so by default when the user enters their verification should be false so then they need to verify themselves then only it will change the value to true and after that i'm going to have timestamps when the user is created so timestamps is also true yeah so we are done with our uh, schema now what we are doing is we are, now we need to create and export this right so const user this should be always in capital because this is the name of your uh, model name so user mongoose dot model which is a method for creating a model so inside this i'm going to give a document name so when we are giving any kind of document here it will create a document with this name in the database so after that that, that is a document user is a document name and after that we are going to give the schema of a document so our schema is nothing but the user schema which we have created just now and now we need to export this as well so module dot exports equal to we are going to export this file as a user now if we require here it will be able to import as a user now you may get a doubt uh, how can we verify whether this document in the database is created with the users so one other thing we should uh, notice is whichever you give the name here it will have a multiple of it in your document because a document is nothing but it will not have a one data right it will be having many kind of fields so that's why by default whenever you give any kind of singular name here the mongodb converts it into multiples of it so it should have a document called users so we can confirm it by opening our mongodb mongodb compass so as i've told in the previous videos we are going to use mongodb compass instead of using website uh, this is the mongodb compass i was talking about now once this is uh, loaded and successfully opened we can see our database of this authentication app and as well as the document so connect it will take few seconds depending upon our internet connection it will open your database as you can see this is our auth app database and this is the author database and if i click there is a users named document so if i click open this document there's nothing here because we just created the document but we have not entered any kind of data that is you there is no user in your database so this is how you are going to create a model that is after creating it will automatically get created in the mongodb also so this is the user model 
in the next video we are going to have a route and we are going to get back and started hello guys welcome back in this video we are going to write a very first route in our backend that is in node.js so in this route we are going to have the authentication part that is nothing but registering the user as well as logging in the user so in our application we are going to follow model view controller kind of setup that is nothing but model is the previous year we've created user model right that is a schema and view is a front end here we have the client folder right this is the view what a user will be viewing so that is a view another one is a controller which we are going to have our routes so model view controller with the help of controller and model the view will be appeared so this is a very interesting setup and our code will also look very clean and simplified so let's get started as part of controller we are going to have uh, two different folders one will be of routes obviously so all the routes which we are going to have in this app application will be storing in this routes folder and another folder will be of controller so whatever the routes we are having in that there will be have specific kind of functions right those functions will be in this controller folder so without wasting any further time let's get started with creating our very first route here so we'll name this route as auth route because we are going to have authentication logic in this route so first things first we need to uh, import express so const express require express and after that we also need to import router from the expo express so express dot router so this will initialize our router using express package now here we are going to have our request that is as i've said uh, auth route will be having a request of registering and logging the user right so we are having that part here so router dot post you will be having many kind of request in your application that is get request post request put request delete request all kind of request so what post request here means is we are going to post values in the database that is we are going to add values into database and get method is nothing but it will retrieve the data from the database and similarly the post is for modify and it is for deleting the contents in our database so here we are going to first register right so register is nothing but when a user inserts the data into the form and clicks on submit button then all the data will be inserted into database so that's why we are going to have this route called post so here we are going to give our route uh, first parameter is our route we are going with the register and the second parameter will be our function you can see right here as a sync function uh, saying that a request and response having this arrow function all that but that won't look good if you are having many kind of routes so that's why we are not going to have this arrow function or this specific function here we are going to have this function outside of this folder that is in controller we are going to have this asynchronous or synchronous function so we are not going to write this instead of that we are going to write our function name here register user now it will throw error or it will not work because it doesn't know what is register user means like we have not written the definition of that function we have not imported from anywhere so what we are going to do is we are going to write our function in the control as you can see the file has been created now first thing we are going to do is whenever we do any kind of functions like a uh, registering or logging in we are going to uh, access our uh, database right so we are going to have our database imported here so that is nothing but our model so user const user equal to require and from models 
model directory and inside the model we have user model so we have imported a user model into this controller file successfully now what we are going to do is we are going to write our function so const register user this function is nothing but uh, which we have defined here right so we are going to write definition of this function and import into this author out file so register user and this will be asynchronous i'll tell you why it is asynchronous because we are going to wait for some kind of data to uh, put into the database at access so it should not uh, go sequentially it should wait for some kind of se steps so that is what asynchronous means unless or until a uh, fifth like uh, example a fifth line is completed it should not go into the sixth line because uh, there might be some cases where a user or a variable is having any kind of data then only it will have some kind of functionality so that's why we are having this asynchronous function that means unless or until this step is completed you can't go into the next step you already know that javascript by default is synchronous that it won't wait for anything it will just go through sequentially so that's why we are writing this asynchronous function and we are going to have our arrow function here and first things first we are going to import all the fields like whatever the user is uh, inserting in the form we are going to import those so first thing will be the user as mentioned in our model user is our username email and password these things we are going to take from the user right as is verified by default will be false we are going to take three things that is user email as well as password so where do we get this from we are going to request body from the body of our web page we are going to get this three variables uh, the three data once we take data from the user next thing we are going to do is we are going to validate that like uh, if we are getting email first we need to check that whether this email is already in the database or not because a user cannot register two times with the same email right so that's why we are going to check that condition here so for that purpose i am going to have another variable saying that user exist equal to and whenever you write a sync we are going to say this await that means unless you complete this line you can't go into the next set of lines so what we are going to do is we are going to database and then we are going to find one find one with our email variable so what it does is with this data user entered like a email let's take that xyz at gmail.com so that will search in this user database if it is present user will be true if it is if it doesn't present user will be uh, user exist will be a false variable as we now took into this variable now we are going to check this condition if user exists that means if the user exist variable is true then we are not going to register that user instead of that we are going to throw a pop-up saying that you have already been registered with this email or the user is already there with this particular email id so i'm going to return return res whenever you write a request as a request is already used now we are going to give response so res dot status first we are going to give status and then we are going to send few data and in this we are going to send this as a json which first thing will be success which is false because uh, the function has not gone through right it just returns false that user already exists with the data that means registration is not happening so the next thing will be my message so this will be the string i'll say that user already register with this 
email so that will uh, return to the user sorry we should not use a semicolon here it should be a comma because we are sending two kind of things here and in the else part that means if the user doesn't exist with that particular email id then we are going to register that mail id so in else part we are going to have this try catch block because if there is any kind of network problem or any other uh, so side of client side problem we should also handle that uh, so if everything goes fine the try catch will execute and everything will be fine if there is some kind of problem either in user in or in a database or in our server side then that will throw error saying that there is some kind of network issues so we'll have this uh, try catch block here and in this try block we are going to register so for this video we are going to have just a basic registration without having any kind of encryption or hashing a password we are going to have just basic registration in the next sections we are going to have other sections saying that it how to have a hashing your password how to encrypt your password and all those things so for this video we are going with just basic registration for that purpose we are going to create an object saying data and it will have this user email and password so this these are the fields uh, that needs to be sent into the database uh, now we need to send this uh, object into database or the best other thing we can do is we'll just uh, already we have this uh, request dot body right so we are going to have the same here as well so const new entry equal to new user and it will be of request dot body so whatever you have in request dot body it will automatically get stored in the object in the new entry variable now what we are going to do is we we will just save this new entry here so new entry dot save so and our purpose will also have this log into our console whether it's saving or not is just for our example purpose you need not to have this line in your project let's save this everything will be formatted and once this is done we are going to return something for user right so that is a response so re response dot status of 200 which sends us this information so success will be obviously true because the registration has completed here and the message will be registration successful and our try block is completed we need to uh, handle this uh, catch block as well so nothing here we can just have this one line res dot status it will throw an error right so 400 series would be fine and here we'll have few things which is first one will be the success it'll be of false and a message we are going to send it this error variable which we are having this catch block so we are going to return this as well so return let's save this and our registration code is successfully completed and what we are going to do is we haven't connected our uh, front end to back end right so we are going to connect our front end to back end so for third purpose we need to go into client and package.json here we need to have one line that is proxy proxy and the next one will be our http host here we have the http host as uh, 5000 right if you see here the port we are having is 5000 
so we are having the same thing here http this two slashes localhost 5000 and we need to have a comma here so this is a proxy for so what it means is our database or backend is having this local host of 5000 port right so whenever it we are uh, trying to access any kind of backend we just need to use uh, this thing the like our proxy no need to every time use this local host 5000 all that now we have successfully connected to our front end to back end and also we have completed this uh, auth control right we need to import it here so before importing we need to export here so let's go down here module dot exports and what are the functions we are having in this file so for now we having only register user right so we'll be just exporting register user and in this we are going to import that we can just type writing register user and it will import itself so router dot post register and register user whenever this call is happening it will go this register user to auth controller and all these steps will be executed and we have completed route and controller right but we are forgetting another thing we need to have this route mentioned in our server.js file so now we are going to write that code in our server.js it is nothing simply we are going to import it so first things first we'll have your const out route equal to require and we are going to get that from routes folder so routes folder and we have auth route and the next thing we are going to do is we need to have app dot use so it tells this backend part to go into that registry that slash auth or slash user whichever you're going to define here that route it is going to uh, go and execute the files so auth use and i'll have auth then whatever i've imported your auth route so whenever i access a uh, 5000 slash auth route then it will execute the code in auth route that is nothing but the auth route file this is the file it will execute and another thing we need to have here is json that is app dot use express dot json this is the object we need to have mandatory in our application because we are accessing the body right like register the body unless you have this json object uh, in your node code you cannot access that request body you know all done and in the next video we are going to see the front end part how we are going to submit the values from the front end welcome back guys in the previous video we've done one uh, silly mistake uh, if you can see in the console we were getting this error but we didn't notice it that error was we didn't export our router so we need to export this router so that error goes off so module exports and we are going to export this router and once i save this now you can see there won't be having any errors the server connected successfully and mongodb also connected successfully so in this video we are going to connect our front end to the back end now we are going to have this register page right so we are going to register.js and here now we are going to handle this register submit that whenever user clicks on submit what should happen we are going to write the logic now so first this should be asynchronous because we are going to have a, a set of operations in this function like a 
we are going to form validate we are going to uh, send into database and other stuff right so that's why it is important to have this asynchronous function and i've told in the previous section that with this user variable with this email variable and the password c password variables we are going to access the data in that field right so how we are going to do that so it's simple if you're using this data word here so with just data dot user or data dot email data dot password we can access the data in the field whichever entered by the user the first thing we need to do is whenever a user submits we need to check the password and confirm password they both should be same right so we need to have that if condition data dot password should be triple equal to data dot c password so we are using triple equal to because everything should be same including the data type everything should be it's a strict a uh, comparison if you're using triple equal to and we are going to have a else condition also right like if the user uh doesn't have the same password and confirmation we are going to handle that as well so for now we are going to alert our console log the error saying that passwords doesn't match yeah now we are going to handle this if the password uh, and confirm password are same we are going to store that data whichever the user has entered so we are going to store that in our object user uh, data equal to here we are going to uh, store our object in the same names as of our database that is user email and password so that first thing will be user it should be the value of data dot user so data dot user is nothing but uh, whenever the user types in the user field that data will be stored in this user variable and the second one would be email and this should be data dot email and the last one we are going to store our password also right so password data dot password so before uh, storing it on database let's just see whether we are getting uh, this data from the form or not so for that we'll just console log for now so once we get we are sure that we are getting the data then we are going to insert our data into database so once the compilation is done i'll show you uh, our website how registration goes on so if you are not sure this is our uh, ongoing application and this is our completed application so we are in login right we'll go into registration page and you can see okay the compilation is okay these are the warnings because we have added these slashes in our pattern so that's we can ignore it uh, so now we are going to test this register submit here we'll have uh, my name and my email address and password i'll give some kind of strong password so yeah now when i click on submit okay it throws me this error we need to have more than six letters right yeah and i'll have our console log open to see whether our data is being fetched or not so if i click on submit yeah we got this json object where it says user is abhishek yeah which i've tabbed uh email is my email and the password which i've entered so don't worry we are going to hash this password in our next section so till now we are going to have this password as a visible so as we are getting this password now we are going to save that in our database 
be able to access or to be able to access any other http route we are going to use a http request right so uh, we have in javascript a fetch method but we are going to use a package called axios i think you're already familiar with axios package so axios package is nothing but it will let you have a request response http kind of request using that axios so we're going to install that npm i axios so once the installation is done we are going to use axios to do http request in our front end so generally what we'll do is we are going to have this axios and we'll request to our backend we have few routes like uh, auth register routes with that routes we are going to have our request so let's start our server as well npm start so while this happens i'm going to import axios into this file so import axios equal to sorry from axios now once our uh, object has been um, created or stored we are going to make our request that is we are going to make a request that means we are having we are spending some time right so unless or until this operation is done you should not go to the next line the control should not go into the next line so that's why we are going to write this await now, await axios is our method and here also we are having this post request right we are submitting our values to the database we are not getting it we are submitting so that's why we are going to use this post request and the first parameter will be our route so if you check in our uh, backend the first should be of auth and after that whatever the routes we are having auth slash register so that is what here we'll be having auth slash register now you may wonder why we have written this proxy here if you don't write proxy here every request you make to a database here you need to write that http localhost 5000 all that stuff which makes it as a repetitive task so that's why we are going to have this proxy uh, mentioned in our package.json now we are going to access this register and the second would be our object this is what we are sending to the back end right so our second would be the object now we are going to handle this like then uh, and catch like promises if this post uh, request is successful what should it do if this post request is failure what it should do so we are having this then catch so yeah i'm going to have this function here then if log dot data so log dot data means if we go into the controller when we data is nothing but this success message or this whatever that is in send uh, json that is called data so we are going to check whether it is success or not that means whether it's a true or false so data dot success now we are going to handle if the request is successful or not so what we are going to have is it should say if the success use uh, registered successfully or else we need to have another alert saying that user has not registered so we'll have another alert something went wrong you can have your own messages so something went wrong and this ends our uh, then block now we are going to have our catch block so dot catch and here we are going to have a error 
this will be another arrow function here we are going to alert our error whatever there is any kind of a request uh, error or any kind of client error then the user will know what is the exact error here so we'll just save this and we'll see if there's any errors in our front end no we are not having any kind of errors in both front end and back end now let's go to our application we are in login so we'll go into register similarly we'll open our console tab to check whether the data insertion is happening or not so once we get any kind of response here and any kind of alerts we'll go into database and check we'll have a name here a email address and a password which i've tabbed in our earlier video so qwerty1234 qwerty1234 here i'll just type three let's see whether the password and confirm password are different whether it throws an error or not so it says password doesn't match so it's working fine now what i'll do is i'll have four also now when i click on submit the user uh, object is we are getting and it says user registered successfully so that means our data has been entered into the database so for that we'll check in our database so mongodb so this is a mongo atlas i've already uh, spoken about this mongodb atlas uh, in our previous sections so we are going to have all data in our online instead of going into that website we have this application called mongo compass so in this mongo compass we can check our uh, databases whichever we create so this is a udemy auth application and let's connect so depending upon your internet connection this application works fast so this is the database and here we'll be having user right so if we click on user you can see our data has been stored here which is user email id password and is verified it's a false because we have defaultly created it to be false right with the id also don't worry the password it is visible in the next sections we are going to hash that password also so in this video we have completed the registration part in the next video we are going to see how the login part works in the previous video we've completed registration part both front end and back end you can see our uh, data has been in the console also now in this video we are going to write our login part so for that we are going to create another route here so router dot post and here login i'll tell you why we are using a uh, login because we are fetching values uh, from the form and we are submitting that to the database values so we are checking it right like comparing from the values which we have like posting the values which we have to the database we are comparing so that's why we are going to have this post if we are simply getting data from database then we are going to use get uh, method and here i'll have a function login user now we are going to have inner auth controller okay we have got some error here okay login user is not defined that's because we haven't written anything so far we'll minimize this register user and we'll start creating const login user this will be of uh, asynchronous as well because we are making database request so or request response arrow function and now we are going to export this login register sorry login user function and if we import here then our error should go away login user so let's save and now there's no error we'll go back to auth controller and here we are going to write our logic first we'll get 
email id and password from the user because in login you are going to have only two fields right email id and password so email id and password from request dot body and then what we are going to do is we are going to check whether this email and password both are there in one particular document or not now here we are going to have this a try catch block because uh, sometimes you there will be a user sometimes there won't be that um, particular user in a database that is the user yet to be registered so we are going to handle both try and catch now we are going to have this uh, variable where we'll check with await method whether the email and password are there in our database or not so for that we are going to access our database and find our both email and password now it will tell us if the user is uh, like there with this set of email and password then we are going to send first we will send a status then send an object first one will be of success true and second one will be of message which says login successful we are going to return this that means the user is successfully registered uh, uh, logged in because if the user having the password and email correctly then we are going to show that message else if the user is there but he is not entering the particular credentials then what we are going to do is we are going to have another set of response we'll just send here instead of status because anyway it will be an error so success will be of false and message will be invalid credentials invalid credentials and we are going to handle this catch block also simply we'll have this return res dot send error so now we are good with our code so let's uh, practically see whether it's working or not so this is the login page also we have completed just back end we have not yet completed the front end part right so we are going to have that as well so this is the login page and here we are going to import use state because here we are not using any kind of validation because user only needs to be have some kind of restrictions only while entering if entering all the details is fine then obviously retrieving details would be also the fine as we are not using any kind of library like use form in the registration uh, component we are using this state because uh, to change our variable like values we are going to use use state and similarly in the form also we need to have that here the value will be of so before doing that let's just uh, initialize our use state variables that is const email set email and this will be equal to use state first it will be of a null string because the user won't be having entering anything right so that's why it's null next would be the password so password set password is equal to use state and this will be also null now we are going to have values here the value here we'll be having as email 
and for password we are going to have as password now we are going to handle this on change also right whenever user enters uh, the change should uh, reflect like we should handle whenever user types any kind of string so for that purpose we are having one method in the input field that is on change so on change to be able to reflect that change we are using this on change method so on change and we're having this e set mail so whenever user enters uh his data into this field then that data will be entered into the set email so e dot target dot value so whatever he enters the set email method will target that and store into this email field that email variable and we'll have the same thing in the password also so on change e set password e dot target dot value now the both uh, input fields will track and you also will have this e and we'll use this e dot prevent default so what this method does is it will stop reloading when submitting our uh, login form uh, like if there might be case that you've entered a wrong uh, password then if you click on submit whole page will refresh then again you need to enter email and password again so even dot prevent uh, prevent default will prevent that sorry prevent typo and prevent default now what we are going to do is we are going to store this email and password here so user data email and password we are storing these two variables in one object itself now what we are going to do is we are going to access our uh, database with help of axios and before that we need to have this a uh, try catch block try catch and we'll import axis also in order to make requests http request so import axios from axios now in the try block what i'll have is i'll have axios dot post because we are posting this data the email and password data and comparing which we have in our database so first route is auth because that is what we have written in our server auth and the rest of things are this register or login we are having this login right so that's why we are going with slash login slash login and the second will be our data that is user data similarly we'll handle this in a then catch block that is promise blocks log if and if we see in our auth controller we are having the success and message right so to access that we are going to uh, that will have in data so log dot data dot success so if log dot data dot success that means the user is successfully logged in then i need to get this alert as login successful else if the user has invalid credentials then he should get invalid credentials as a message and we are 
going to just console log this uh, catch so console dot log error and if the success is happening we'll also log a message here our user data just to know whether it's working or not so now once compilation is done yeah uh, our code is not having any kind of errors let's see here let's open our console to see our results okay now in our database if you check there's only one user with uh, my name and uh, with my email id and password so we'll see the same here email id and i'll enter the incorrect password wantedly so let's see whether we are getting that or not so if i click on submit it says invalid credentials and there's nothing being printed so now i'll enter the correct credentials here now if i click on submit it's still giving invalid credentials okay i've entered one uh, wrong digit so yeah now let's click on submit again it's saying invalid credentials okay my email id i've entered it wrongly so let's edit here a b h i s h e k yeah now when i click on submit it's again saying it as invalid credentials there is something wrong happening here if you check here in the database values uh it's the same this is the email and this is the password but we are getting something wrong okay let's just check our code if there is uh anything wrong here okay let's check back end here so this is the login and this is a request body you will get two objects email and password then you need to find in a user database okay if you check here this function will accept object so if you see a object so that's why we need to that's why we are get, getting that error we need to pass this as an object if you see our register also we are passing as object to check whether this email is there or not so let's just save and check whether that has successfully worked so this is the email and password if i click on submit yeah you can see now we got the login successful message with our email id and password here don't worry we have just console log dot details just for the purpose whether it's working or not we are going to remove that console log there and that's in login.js so here's a login console log so i'll remove that line and now if i log in i won't get that console log because that's not a good idea while developing yes you can see whether your logging credentials are working or not but that's not a good idea to log your credentials in console log so once this compilation is done we'll check for one last time and we'll proceed for next steps it's still compiling yeah now it's done okay we'll refresh this page again we'll enter details this is my mail id and the password will be qwerty three one two three four so now if i click on submit i just need to get that login successful alert but not anything in console log so you can see we've just got a message of login successful so this is done uh, login and registration both are done in the next video we'll see how to hash our password because if you see in database it's just simple text we need to hash this password if someone logs into our database then they should not find the password and another thing we'll do is we'll stuck this alert this is just a default javascript alert right so we are going to style with a 
npm package of toastify we are going to style our alerts in the further videos hello guys in this video we are going to learn how to encrypt that is hash our password because if you see in our database this password is visible for everyone we need to hash it in some way so bcrypt js is a npm library it's a famous library if you can see weekly download it's having more than one and a half million so this is one of the famous library by which you can hash your password and protect your password from seeing others so this is the official npm js website in this you can just type bcrypt.js and you will find that or else you can just go with this command npm i bcrypt.js so first we'll install this so we need to install this in backend because we are writing in authentication like auth control right so auth control is nothing but that is in backend so if i minimize this front end so controller is in backend here only we are checking uh, like here only we are checking password email then we are uh, storing it in our database right so before storing it we need to hash that password so this is a backend console here what i need to do is install that package so npm i bcrypt js so let's install this meanwhile it installs we'll just go through what this uh libraries and how to use it so what you need is you need to just install it by using this command then you need to uh, import this and what you need to do is after that this is the most important thing if you can see here to hash any password these are the steps first we need to generate salt then we need to hash with the help of salt so this is the general uh, documentation you can find uh, in this website so don't worry i'll explain you what is this salt and how to ash it in a few steps so let's see whether the installation is done yeah installation is done now we'll again restart our server so node one server and once the database is successfully come connected then we'll start importing bcrypt So you can see mongodb database has con connected successfully so what i'll do here is first of all i'll import bcrypt before using it we need to import it so i'll import with this name so bcrypt equal to require bcrypt js then we'll first check in a register because unless or until you hash the password in your registered database then only you can log in with that password right so first we'll hash that here let's check our code first it's check whether user exists or not so yeah if user is exists then we'll uh, say the user is already registered or we are going to register here right so before saving here what we need to do is here we need to generate salt so here salt is nothing but a random string it can be any random string it won't have any kind of meaning some x y z y z that kind of a random string so that how i'll generate is i need to just give a one variable any variable you can give any name const salt equal to await because this is going to be a synchronous function because it generates some random string right so with this random string only we are going to encrypt our password so both this random string are original password they both will be going through some kind of algorithm it mixes and gives out some random string so i'll show you the final output how uh, the password uh, we are getting it after hashing with this salt so await then we are going to use this library bcrypt dot gen salt so gen salt is the method by which you can generate salt so after that the parameters it takes is you can give any number of parameters like uh if you give 20 or 30 the number of para uh digit like integer you give that number of unique string or random string it will generate so using 20 or using 50 is a more randomized text you will get so for this tutorial i'll just go with 10 you can give your any number so with the help of this salt round that is a 10 it will generate me a some kind of a random string 
so now the salt is generated now what we need to do is as i've said with the help of this salt we are going to hash our password so we need to hash our password here so i'll have const hashed password equal to here also we'll write away because we are working with this library right so it takes some time so that's why i'm going to have this asynchronous method bcrypt dot hash so hash is a method so here the first uh, parameter it takes is the password which user enters so this is a variable right because we are entering uh, we are requiring it using this variable password it's a request dot body and the second parameter is the salt which we have generated this salt variable is salt right so we need to use so now what this hash method does is it takes both our user entered password and our salt and it encrypts with some kind of algorithm and it generates a hashed password now we are going to store this hashed password in our database so we need to change this line because now what it does is it simply saves our required uh, request dot body which is our user name email and password but this is not the password which we want to store in our database we need to store our hashed password so for that i am going to change our object so what i'll do here is const first of all we'll comment this because i'm going to save this uh like have this variable as new entry so const new entry is equal to await user dot create so you can simply create or you can also have the uh, object and then you can have this kind of step so i'll simply have a create and in this object what i'll have is a user is a user only because we are having no changes there and next it will be email email also we are storing it as it is and the next one we are storing password as a hashed password so whatever the hashed password uh, you are having that will be stored in a password variable in database so we can ignore this uh, new entry uh, like saving because the create itself will create and here also we can remove and then we'll save and once the we get all successful messages we'll try registering again so if you see our database this is the already registered thing we have done we are going to register with a new credentials like not registered and i'll go with some kind of a name like i'll just giving this a random register as a name and email address register at the gmail.com and the password will be i'll give the same password so that you will find the difference what is the storing uh, in the database so i'll give the qwerty at the rate one two three four and the same password here as well so can qwerty at the rate of one two three four so if i click on submit so it says the user is registered uh, email and all that we should actually uh, need to comment this also because when registering uh, you no need to show here in the console log it will again give you a vulnerability uh, check so that's in register.js 21st line we are going to comment that one as well so 21st line okay this is just for test purpose we have gave while developing but once the a project is done and into the production you need to remove this console log things so let's check our database whether the object is created or not so i'm going to refresh and now you can see the password it's no more qwerty at the rate one two three four it's just a randomized text included your password that is a uh, the algorithm which we are using with the help of bcrypt library now the register part is done so when user is registering if you check database the password will be encrypted one but the second step is we also need to decrypt right so while entering the password we need 
to compare this password so for example if i show you now the successful message okay now let's get to login and if i give here register at the rate gmail.com and i'll give the same thing here qwerty at the rate 1234 and if i click on submit if we give our mail a uh, register at the rate gmail.com and our password as qwerty1234 and now if i click on submit it will throw me error because the password i'm entering is qwerty1234 but the password in database if you see in the database it's not qwerty1234 at the rate 1234 it's some hashed password so here what we need is here we need a comparison or a decrypt logic what it does a decrypt logic it should do this hashed password it should check with the user entering password so again it should decrypt from there and then it should compare whether the both password are same or not then it should throw a message whether it's a successful login or a failure login so we are going to decrypt password now let's head to our code and here if you see this is the login procedure right so here we are checking both email and password but here we shouldn't check both email and password we'll check only email and if there is any kind of user with this email then we are going to check uh, his credentials like if user is present we are going to have another check condition here like user is there okay but the second condition we need is here we are going to compare it so first we will have this await bcrypt and we have a compare function in bcrypt that is a inbuilt function where we can decrypt our password so first what we need to do is the user enter password and with the password of database so this is the database password so user dot password here if this is correct then we are going to send this message so we'll copy paste here else we need to throw the error so we'll copy paste this line here yeah so if you check our code first we are going to check whether there is a record found with this particular email id which user has entered if the user is there then we are going to compare with that user and the passwords of which user entered and which is in database if that is successful then we are going to returning with the login successful or else we are going to give invalid credentials if the user only not present in our database then also we are going to give this invalid credentials alert so we'll check now so now this is the same password right qwerty 1234 if i click on submit it should get a login successful message if i click on submit it's still giving me invalid credentials so let me refresh will enter our credentials here so email address will be register at the rate gmail.com and the password will be qwerty at the rate 1234 so if i click on submit it should give me login successful okay it's still giving invalid credentials let's check our code uh, first it's checking email and password sorry it's checking email okay it should check with the find one method not just find so that's why whenever uh, we are giving any kind of credentials it's giving invalid now it should work the find one method which we gave now once our db is connected then we'll try another time whether it's working or not so yeah so this is the same credentials which is our, in our database so if i click on submit yeah now if the login is successful so this is how we are going to hash a password and decrypt a password when user is trying to log in.
welcome back guys in this video we are going to style our toastify alerts so if you check in our application if i click on this we are getting this javascript like default alert types right so we are going to look this more beautiful for that purpose we are going to use this npm called react toastify there are many kind of npms available for toast you can use your own preference but this is what i'm using in my project and this is also a popular uh, npm because it's having a more than a million downloads every week this is the command to install toastify and if you scroll down these are all the documentation uh, you'll get how to use this library so we'll directly jump into documentation that's just nothing but the official react toastify website where you can see how the you can customize your toast so before writing this first we are going to install our toastify alerts in our uh, application so we need to stop this batch and now i'm going with npm i react iphone toastify just click enter and it will download so once the download is completed the first things we are going to do is here we are going to import these statements so let's see whether our installation is done yeah it's done also we'll restart our server npm start and meanwhile we need to uh, import these two statements here the first one is a toast and toast container is the first statement and second statement it is a css uh, we are going to have alerts right so for that toast the css is, uh, styling is coming from this css so we'll copy the same and first we'll try in login.js login.js here we are going to paste that so both uh, the statements uh, have been pasted and the next one what we need to do is simply uh, first we need to have this toast container tag in our code and after that wherever we need we are going to have this toast method as a javascript so we'll copy this toast container and we can paste it anywhere this tag because it doesn't really matter you just need to have that tag in your code so i'm going to paste it at the end so this is the toast container now what we are going to do is instead of this simple alerts here we need to have toast so let's just jump, jump back and we'll go the documentation now and we can see many uh, styles in this website now so these are the styles the position you can select uh, whichever you want the type theme and everything now if you click on this show toast this is the kind of toast you are you will be getting these are the demonstration purpose like experiment you can uh, give all the things and uh, click on this then it will give this kind of output here itself so what we are going to do is we are going to customize this we are near the top right only and the type uh, will give the success one if the user is having the current correct credentials and is able to log in and the theme uh, will give as a colored so if i click on show toast this is the kind of alert i'll get let's try with the light one how we are going to get that so if i click okay this is how we need getting so we are go with the same things and what we need to do here is we'll just copy the javascript function from here and instead of the simple alert we are going to paste that one and this is the toast uh the style we have done and instead of this uh, wow so easy the first parameter is you can have text like what is this toast for whatever you have here it will be on your toast so what i'm going to do is uh, instead of having this text here as hard coded i'll get the text from the back end so when the user is uh, having the 
correct credentials he'll have this msg that is a message he'll get from message object so what i'll do here is instead of having this string i'll have log dot data dot msg so let's save and similarly we'll have the same for the false alert or so like if the user is having invalid credentials he need to have the danger like error error kind of text in red color so instead of success we'll give error and here also instead of this string we are going to give log dot data dot message so yeah now we'll test in our application so i'll refresh this page also now what i'll do is i'll give a register at the rate gmail.com and our password qwerty at the rate one two three four now if i click on submit this is the toast i'm getting so this is mo much more beautiful than the default javascript alert which is shown up here in the middle so if we hover on this it will wait for you to go off from there then it will close it off you, you can customize all the things in this function itself like auto close in how many seconds and hide the progress bar click on close so if you click on the toast it will immediately get disappeared so the theme all things you can customize as per your own preference so this is success right we are going to check the failure message also how we are getting so we are wantedly giving the wrong password if i click on submit now we need to get error message so this is how we are getting as invalid credentials so login part is done so let's try the register part as well so register part also we need to uh import the statements here from here so we are going to import the toast as well as the css one let's go into this register paste both those statements then we need to have that tag also right uh, the toast container tag so we'll have this at the end of our file so here we can have that the toast container so again we need to go into this alerts where we are having so here we are having these alerts right so we are having three alerts now we need to change these alerts to the react toastify alerts so we'll just paste this the success one and the error one this is the success one and here instead of this message i have this so what it does is instead of having here a hard code text it will get the text from backend so we'll check what is the text in the backend for register we will get text as registration successful okay that's uh, nice and the error one also will simply copy paste from here we are going to get text from backend uh, if there is something wrong or anything so we are going to paste here and another one we need to paste it here right uh, if there is uh, any error so here instead of log.data we are going to have this error message in our toastify and uh, if the password doesn't match also we are having alert right so here instead of this date uh, message we are going to have the string here which says passwords doesn't match so if we want to have a single quote here we need to have a double quote outside so i'm going to change that as well so let's save yeah now everything is in a toastify alert so what we are going to do is we are going to delete this both users because uh, uh, i need my name also in hashed password so i'll just delete and i'll 
start registering from start so that we'll get toastify alerts so now we are having no users in our database let's just go to our application and we'll click on not registered and here i'll give my name so this is my name and the email address would be this and the password what we'll do is first of all we'll type a different password here that means i'm going to give a different password in password and different password in confirm password so that will get uh, alert so this is the password and this is the different password so if i click on submit this is the error it says password doesn't match so instead of giving the different one i'll give the same one and now if i click on submit it should give me a successful message it says now registration is successful so as a registration is successful now let's try whether the login is successful or not so this is my email and here i'll wantedly give the wrong password to check the error message so this is the wrong password now if i click on submit i need to get the error toast so it says invalid credentials now what i'll do is i'll give the correct credentials so if i click on submit now i should get a login successful message so this is now much more beautiful uh, login text successful we got here so we have completed the login part and registration part with hashing password as well as the styling our alerts so in the next section we are going to see the actual implementation of jwt welcome back guys so in this video first before implementing the jwt we should know why jwt is required and where is it helpful while uh, logging in that is in authentication so so far when we enter this login credentials and click on submit it's just giving that uh, like register successful or login successful right but after login is successful we also need to redirect the user to another page like say home or dashboard so how do we do that first check uh, whether we are getting the same thing or not so this is my credentials and this is my password so if i click on submit it says login is successful but after login is successful it should take me to the home page as well as if we uh, like directly go into home page the application should know what user we are like until we click on log out it should remember us so how we are going to do that for for that purpose what we are going to do is we are going to store in local storage our credentials or uh, the user details we are going to store in local storage whenever the application is launched then the website will check whether there is any details in local storage if there is any details and that is correct then it will automatically log in to the home page so we are going to store the details in local storage so how do we do that so once the login is successful we need to do that right so here the login is successful so after the toast what i'll have is i'll have the, we have this default uh, variable as a local storage from uh, javascript then we are going to have this set item we are setting item right we are storing uh, the details in local storage so set item and the first parameter is key that is we need to store under this name like it simply you can think as a key value pair or a variable value pair so here we are going to have this as a data so i need i want to store the value of a user in the data variable in local storage of the browser so data and the second will be i'll just uh, store this in a stringify way so json dot stringify now i'm going to store the user data so here the user data is nothing but email and password so if i save this and let me open my uh, application console the local storage one so to go into local storage you need to click on this application 
and this is the local host 3000 right if you check this address so so far we don't have any uh, details stored in local storage that is there's no key value pair here so once i click on submit we need to have data as the key and the value should be our email and password so if i click on submit you can see login successful and also there's a data of email and password uh, generally we won't store password here we just uh, store email only so instead of that we can go with uh, email it's a never a good uh, practice to store your passwords in local storage so email now if i uh, we are going to delete this first of all so delete and if we click on submit now it's just storing our a variable that is it's just storing our email address so it will store whatever we want and the next step is it's okay we are storing it and uh, it takes us to the next page so i'll show you how it takes us to the next page so it should set this and also it should navigate right so we are going to have that navigate after this we are going to have this use navigate function from react order dom again we need to get the object from use navigate or const navigate equal to use navigate now we are going to use this object of navigate down here so navigate to home home or dashboard any page uh, after login successful wherever you want user to redirect this is the line which you want to use in your code so now let's see so if i click on submit okay we need to enter the credentials right as uh, the application is reloaded the credentials have been disappeared so these are my credentials and my password so if i click on submit yeah it's taking me to slash home so once is uh, uh designing this page is done you will see a different page here so here we are storing it the data is just being stored in this local storage but the way we are storing is whenever you, whoever clicks in this local storage one they can simply see our uh details which we don't want to because it's not just as uh, the account will be using whenever you use uh like keep account in this way whenever someone opens and goes into this uh, geeky person then they will find your details and it's easy to uh, edit this if you click on right click you can just edit this and it, they will modify your credentials and with some kind of technology technology like hacking related scripts they will run the script and they may hack you so this is one of the vulnerabilities storing in your local storage like by default with this thing so instead of this what we are going to do is we need to store like some kind of encrypted token like just we stored the password uh, here right so we'll refresh so this is the password right so if you see this no one will know what the password is how to decrypt that or anything else so if we store these kind of uh thing in our local storage then even if some persons go into this local storage and check the local storage variable then they will find just some random uh, text which they won't be able to decrypt so that is why we are going to use D uh, jwt and the decryption also we are going to implement jwt and we are going to uh, generate that code like a randomized text we are going to generate that code with some kind of text like maybe it may be user id username user email anything so with some kind of variables we are going to generate a unique randomized text so we are going to do that in our next video so we are going to implement our very much awaited jwt that is nothing but json web token first of all we are going to uh, delete this one because uh, anyhow we are going to have with the jwt right so instead of this let's just go into login 
and now we need to install the JWT package here so let's install npm i json web token so this will install json web token in my backend and also i need to import it here once the installation is completed i'll import and i'll use that library we'll just start implementing it so const jwt equal to require json web token yeah and we'll start our backend server nodemon server as we have imported the jwt now we are we need to use right so as i've told in the previous video where we are mainly using our uh, jwt's while storing the data in our web browser it should store in some kind of a token way and also uh, it should store and it will it should disappear in some days so in local storage you can't just store it for permanently right you need to uh, delete that some kind of cookie in certain kind of days and also even if the password and that is same the user should be login only if the sign in the signature is correct so i'll show you how to do that so while storing we uh, logging in we are storing a uh, local uh, storage right so instead of storing it in our front end we need to store in back end so we'll remove this and we'll go into this login user once the successful message is done here we need to do that so once it is successful what we need to do here is we need to generate a token so const token equal to jwt dot sign so with what a kind of data which we are giving into this and the kind of uh, we also need a secret key for our uh, application so with the data which we are giving and the secret key those both will be signed and it will generate a token for us so the first will be the data so what i want to do is i want to store a user id as well as the email not password so instead of doing that instead of just having the password in our uh, signature i'll just store the username or user email so here i'll generate so const token data equal to here i'll have a id will be user dot id and the name i'll give as uh, user dot user because that's how we stored in our database if you check here this is the username and this is the email so email we are going to store as user dot email so email will be as user dot email so now we need to send this data token data this is the first parameter or data and the second is we need to send a secret key or a private key if you can check here we got this uh, message also the suggestion so here we have two ways of sending a secret or private key like if your code is uh, exposed then they will find what is a secret key uh, if you type here hard coded way but if you use process.env then there is no way the user will be uh, or some, anybody will be able to get your secret id so that part we are go going in the next video how to use a uh, process.env but for this video purpose we'll have this as a hard coded text only so i'll here i'll say as secret key one two three don't worry we are going to give this as some kind of encrypted way that is a process.env for this video purpose i'm showing you how this works and the last parameter will be 
that is the optional parameter uh, which says how in how many days it should expire this token should expire so the expires in i am giving as a 30 days so 30 days means 30 d means it will expire this token in 30 days and now once this token is generated i'll save this uh, i'll send this from back end to front end this token so what i'll do here is i'll send another one as token as the token okay now we need to store in a uh, here right we are storing local storage so here instead of email what i'll do is i'll have this log dot data dot and the variable is a token so let's save once the compilation done, we'll check so here we are not having any kind of key value let's refresh our site also yeah now let me check my credentials here and the password is yeah now let me click on submit so the user is successful and it took me to the home page and if you see our data here we have this randomized text okay i'll extend this so that you people can see yeah this is the randomized text so what i'll do is i'll go into the jwt website so that uh, we can confirm this like we can get the details from this randomized text so this is the long text so if if we copy and paste it in jwt website we can check what are the details encrypted in that token so if we go here yeah let's just remove this and give this so you can see we have stored id right so i'll show you what all the things we have stored in this token we have stored a user id user name and user email so if you check here it says a username user email and user id also with the expiration date like when it is issued and when it's going to expire so this is the uh, general way if a user takes this but a user can't get any kind of password and also it says invalid signature because we are not having any kind of secret key sent here the secret will, key will be in only an application so that's why it's saying invalid signature so once the signature is valid only then only the user will be able to log in successfully and will be sent into the home or dashboard page so that is the use of having a token based jwt and we'll see the many more features of jwt in the next video in the next video we will see how to protect our roots so if we check here now the user is login right so there's no reason you sh user should go into again the login page it should not re redirect or if the user is already registered they then there is no reason to go into register page these both pages should not be visible to a log successfully logged in user and also if the user is not logged in so if i see uh, now the user is not logged in right so if the user is not logged in like we i'll delete the data from here also so, so now the user is not logged in and if i give a route here like slash home it is taking me to that page but the user should not go into that page right if unless or until he logged in successfully so we are going to have this private and public routes addressed in our next video welcome back guys in the previous video we've seen the implementation of jw that is nothing but json web token so in this section we are going to the first video will be about the private and public uh, routes so as i've told in our previous video in the end that if the user is already logged in 
there's no reason he should go back to this login on register screen and if the user is not logged in like if is not the authorized user it should not go into this home page but here in our case which we are able to go into the home page so now this we need to stop this this is a vulnerability a security vulnerability unless user is successful he should not go into the slash home so what we are going to do is here we are going to write a function for public routes as well as a protected route so for that what we do is we'll go into app.js and here we'll have a function so export function and i'll name this function as protected routes and i'll give the parameters as a children you can give anything uh, it's just for example and and the definition will be first i'll get the token which is there in our uh, local storage so first i'll get the auth one so local storage dot get item and a value the variable name so if we see in login.js uh, the variable name we have set is data so we need to use that only so here we'll give data now once there's anything in the data field then that will be stored into this auth variable now what we need to do is we need to check whether there's anything in auth variable or not so if auth variable uh, is there then we are going to return children here children is nothing but uh, the component uh, which we want to render if uh, the token is not there then we are going to return like not return we are going to navigate so we have this uh, function called a navigate in a react router dom so navigate this tag so i am going to redirect to login page so if you can see we have already na uh, imported this navigate from react router dom so what this function does is whenever some components let's uh, try example of we are giving some component into this protected routes so let's say it as a home component or a dashboard component so if you give dashboard component first of all it checks whether there is something in local storage whether the user uh, token is there or not if the user token is there then we'll return the home component like whichever i'm requesting for if the user token is not there then it will simply redirect me to the login screen so similarly i'll have another function for public routes so export function public routes and here also same thing with children and first of all let me uh, retrieve user from the local storage so local storage dot get item and data if this auth is present like if the all is present that means the user is already logged in so if the user is already logged in then we need to redirect the user to the dashboard or home page so navigate to home page and let's handle the else condition also that means if the user is already there and if he wants to uh, request to uh, like login page and register page it should not return so return children 
so this is the simple code for public and private so we have uh, done with writing code the function now we need to implement here in this elements so how do we do that so here inside of this uh, element we need to inscribe this uh, function that is public uh, routes and protected routes here the dashboard element is our protected route so we need to give here as a protected route protected routes and in between this we need to give this dashboard so i'm gonna cut here and paste Yeah. similarly uh, this register and login these are not the protected routes they are public routes but when the user is already there they should not go to login and register so we'll simply give public routes public routes and then here we'll give login and we will be removing this login from here will have the same to this register also public routes public routes and you need to give this register component and let's see here yeah so we are done and uh, here we are having dashboard not home so let's give as a dashboard dashboard is the route and let's see dashboard okay we should have just this dashboard h1 if we are successfully logged into the website so let's see uh, now if we check in our local storage there won't be any user so application and if we check here the localhost 3000 we are not having any key value pair that means we are not having any data in our local storage now what i'll do is i'll have a value here so let's have with this register mail which i've created and then the password for it so it says invalid credentials okay let me uh check what all the credentials are available in my database uh, meanwhile let me try with my uh, credentials so this is my credentials and if i click on submit yeah then you can see the data is there uh the, this is my uh token and you can see the dashboard home we are in dashboard home now as the user is successfully logged in then there is no reason he wants to go into login or register unless he click on logout button he is not required any kind of action to do in login and register so let's see if he is able to go into login and register so this is the login so if you see he is getting redirect to slash home but it should get redirect to dashboard so let's do that uh, yeah here we need to change of slash home it should be dash board let's save and check again now let's go to the login page and as the user is there it is redirect me to the dashboard so what i'll do i'll delete this uh, local storage item so now the user is not present in the local storage so what that means now he should be redirected to login page so if i check see it, it is directly taking me to the 
login page and if i want to go into register that also happens because there is no user in the local storage now as i'm not logged in i should not be able to go into dashboard page so let's check whether i'm able to go into dashboard see it's again redirect me to the login page because there is no user in the local storage so this is the video about public routes and private routes so that hello and welcome guys in the previous video we have done how to give the public and private routes so that not every user will be able to access certain kind of routes so in this video we are going to see how to decrypt the data which we have stored in our J jwt token so let's get started building our dashboard page so if you check in our database so far we have only one user this is the mail i've created so let's try logging into this uh, mail uh, let's jump back into our browser so this is the application which we have which we are building and this is a completed and hosted website which is hosted on heroku app so let's try uh, logging into our application so this is the email id uh, i registered with so let's log in with the same yeah so this is the password let's try to click on submit so now i came into the dashboard but we need to have a uh, more features on this dashboard right so it should say who the user is logged in what the details upon and everything else so this is the part we are going to build in this video let's jump into our vs code and start building this page now so so far we are having this only this h1 so we'll remove this and instead have one div parent div inside this div only we are going to give all other uh tags so let's just go over with the class name as a container this will be the bootstrap class so container will give me the uh, good padding of top and bottom even the left right the four sides of the page and after that i'll have another div and in this div i'll give a background class so uh, i want to have a background color of green so we have a bootstrap class for green right so that is a pg success and this will be having a padding of five on all four sides of the browser so let me tell you how this looks so far now so let's copy uh, sorry save and when the compilation is ready then we'll see the output how it looks in our browser so before that this is how it's looking uh, all white page and a simple uh, h1 tag which tells us that as a dashboard so after compiling we are going to see the change so let's wait it's uh, taking time to compile oh yeah compilation is done yeah so this is how it's looking so what we are going to do is here on this we are going to have as a dashboard name and all other details are below if you remove container then we will be having this uh green color all to the left and right so let's continue building the same and as i've said i want to have a heading on that as a dashboard so dashboard and i'll style this uh, h2 so class name and it should be in a white color because uh, on green white will look good and it should be in center so i'll show you this also how it looks once the compilation is done so yeah this is how it looks okay we are going to make it center right so let's try to make it center okay it was a typo that's why it, would, it is not in the center now if we check yeah the dashboard is in center you can give this as a h1 or any kind of uh, tags and also style it more according to you so we'll continue the next path after this h2 i want to have another div like a different component so div and here i want to give a uh, margin and spacing from the top uh, heading part that is a green color which says a dashboard so i'll have a margin top of five and the padding will be on all sides uh, three three measurement and here i'll have a button 
so no price for guessing this button obviously we should have a logout feature also right once the user is logged in you should be able to uh, log out successfully as well so this button is for logout only so we are going to give logout and the color will be of red color so logout is some kind of danger kind right so user should be able to specify that button relative to the other buttons so i'll give btn uh there's a margin from top three and the btn danger is a bootstrap class which tells it's a red color and after that i'll have a float end which means it will be completely right words so uh, let's save and see how it looks yeah this is good but a top uh, we'll see uh, how it goes after building all other details and don't worry we'll be writing functionality for this logout button uh, once we uh, build all the other components in this page and after this button we'll have a break line and then we'll have a h2 here which tells our name so so far we haven't decrypted uh, the name from node J, uh, jwt token right so we are going to just write simply name here once we get that decryption of the token then dynamically we'll get a name here so then we'll be changing this name to a variable so this will be of top five margin top five and here also uh, while we're decrypting name we can decrypt email also right so we'll decrypt email also so after that what we are going to do we'll be having a few other things like uh, if the password the user wants to update password he should be able to update so we are going to do that also so here i'll give another div and class name i'll give a margin top four another div uh, here i'll give a form here because uh updating we need to give the form right for user to, to update password or anything else so here we'll give a class name of call md5 mx auto so that it will be in center and mt3 is for margin top 5 and padding on both y axis that is top and bottom it should be also 5 and px5 that is nothing but in x horizontal axis so instead of giving this 2 we can give just p5 then it's one and the same so let's see how it looks okay and he name and email will be here and down we need to have a form okay then we'll create a card for a form so div and i'll have a class name for this div also so class name card p3 and i'll have a white color card it's your uh, preference of what color card you want to be in your website and i'll have a h2 tag so that everyone will know what this card means what it will do it will be of uh, uh, details uh, you need to update here if they want to update and the h2 i'll have a class so class name it should be padding top 4 and in x axis it should be 4 so let's check uh, how it's looking for now okay update details okay it down below we need to have a certain kind of form with our text fields okay i'll give this as a text center text center whether it's center yeah it's centered if you want you can just give this uh, to the name and email also text center but we'll see after the decrypting how it looks and it will change according to that and now as i've said we need to have a form here right so let's get started with our form yeah this will be the form 
and action is we don't need any kind of action which will just give on submit on this so on submit yeah you can see on submit at the bottom here so this is on submit and the function uh, will update uh, later so for now we'll just give as a update submit so that it won't throw us a error yeah and it says this error right so we'll also just uh, define uh, broadly the empty function so const update submit uh, arrow function yeah so now we won't be getting any good of errors once we are ready with all our code then we'll handle this uh, update submit and this is a form right we'll have a class name for this form as well so class name i need a margin from top and x-axis also i'll have a margin then inside this i'll have a text fields the first one will be of name so class name uh, i'll give this as a form group which is a bootstrap class so form group and inside this div i'll have a h5 text which a user should know what is going to enter here that is nothing but a name and your input field so that will be the text because the name will be of a text value and value for now i'll just give this as empty okay instead of giving empty while handling only we'll give this a value also and the class name i'll give as a form control so form control and we can also do one thing uh, the user need not to change a uh, username because uh, user name while registering only that will be fixed to a particular user they can't change so we can give that as a read only option so read only option is nothing but when the user uh, is going to do something there it will just disable that input field so that each user will have that uh, username to themselves only and after that i'll give another div for another input field so div class name of form group form group and here i'll give another h5 so here another thing the email address also they cannot change right if they change email address then the whole uh, account or the credentials will be lost it will be completely changed so that's why we are not going to let change the email address also so this is the email and the input field also will uh, do the same thing so input sorry i gave double i it's a typo so input the type will be of a text whether the text or email it doesn't matter actually because we are not letting the user uh, to interact with it so class name form control and this also read only now what user actually can change is if they want to update their password then they can do but also there's one restriction here first they need to give their current password if they know the current password only then they should be able to update the password because if someone logs into your account and you if you're away what if some other person changes your password without knowing uh, by you so that's why we need to check first the current password is correct then only we are going to let user update his password so for that purpose i'm going to have another div so div and this shall be also of class form group and i'll have a current password here so h5 current password okay and here i'll give a input 
and this will be of type password because the, this is a password field the user will be entering and we'll give here a class name as a form control and the placeholder enter current password so yeah so similarly we are going to create uh, other two also that means a uh, password new password and confirm new password so i'll just copy paste those two yeah and uh, instead of having a uh, bunch of it together i'll give mt4 for both of this so mt4 and here of here instead of current i'll give as a new so new and here also i need to change enter new here the confirm new password so confirm new password and here also below confirm new password so let's save this and check out our website how it got changed so if you can see this is the dashboard page so once our uh, description of token is done you can see the name and email id uh, the user logged in and this is the update or details so if the user is logged in then you'll have the name and email address here then if the user wants to change their password first they need to give the current password then a new password and also confirm password also okay we need to have this submit and uh, top five uh, here okay we'll do those changes this need to have mt4 and this also mt4 let's save this now we need to have the submit button so before form only we need to have this another div so in this div i'll have a button tag which tells submit okay i shall have a class for this div also to look at more uh, good so first of all it should be in center because the form the complete form is in center and the button also i'll style it i'll style with the submit button and mt5 which is a margin top 5 and here i indicate type submit because it is a submit button submit button yeah so let's save this and check in our website yeah we have this submit button here so if you have any more details of your website you can just add it here and, and you can build many more things here because this course is about only about authentication we have just built this dashboard with the details of the user and if we want to update the update details. but this is just a template if you are building any kind of security and a beautiful websites then you can just have this part of authentication right started and you can have all the contents here so this is the video about it the next video we are going to write logics of how to decrypt the user and also how to update so that's for this video bye guys in the previous video we have seen how to build up this dashboard page now we are going to see how to decrypt the json web token that is a jw token which we have created how to decrypt it and get our username and user email so without any further ado let's get started so the first thing before decryption we need to get that jwt and verify it right so we are going to verify it that in our backend so to do that first of all we are going to create a middleware file so here i'll give auth middleware dot js yeah and here i'll uh, require jwt because we are we need to verify the jwt token which we are getting from the user so require json web token so if you see our website let's just go to our website and right click and if we go to the application here 
this is where the local storage is saved so this is the local storage and the data this is the jw token which created for this user so we need to decrypt this token only to be able to get our username and email so for that purpose only first we are going to require json web token and after that we need to export this also right so module dot exports and here i'll use asynchronous function because we need to deal with a database here so first one will be a request second one will be a response and third one will be a next here next is nothing but we are going to tell our function to proceed to the next function or the next line of the statement so this is obviously going to be a arrow function and first uh, before having token we'll create a variable as a token and we'll check if because we are storing this token in headers right so we are going to check in a request dot headers dot authorization so if you're having any kind of doubt in this request or headers or organization i'll show you because it's in a library of jwt sorry so we are going to go into jwt website all the tokens or all the authentication will be stored in a headers only so we are going into this introduction so this is all the introduction about the jwt which i've already uh, spoken about it the jwt and when you should use the jwt token also it's an authorization uh, thing that's why we are using jwt and you also know the what is jwt structure the first will be header the payload and signature these all the things were discussed in the previous section so if you're having any kind of doubt just scroll up and watch the videos again and you'll get to it so these are all the things we have done yeah this is the thing uh i was talking about how do json web token works so whenever we create a json web token the authorization will be successful and that authorization will be stored in a bearer that is in a every website will be having some kind of header so in that header there will be a or authorization and there have this bearer token is stored so that's where the valid jwt is stored all the kind of uh, request or response will be carried out using this http headers only so that's why i mentioned in the code that a request dot head headers dot authorization so this is all the uh library or the documentation stuff you want to so if you want to go through it i'll give you the resource added to this link so if you can go to this official website you can learn much more about it so let's go to our code and continue our coding so first what we need to check is whether there is any header or authorization in the request headers so if there is uh, authorization in the headers then what we'll do is we are going to check another thing that is we need in that head headers and in that authorization we should check whether it starts with bearer or not because few seconds back i told that we are going to check the authorization bearer token so we need to give bearer here yeah so that means first of all we are going to check here two conditions first condition is we are going to check http request headers authorization and then if there is something in this authorization we are going to check the bearer because the token will be stored along with that a bearer only and i need to handle this here so that's why first will be try so try catch because if there is any kind of wrong thing happen when checking this uh, request we should catch that error also right so that's why a try catch is uh, mandatory and now i've created the variable of token right so what i'll do is i'll store the token here so token equal to request dot headers dot authorization and it will be split 
where it has some kind of a space or a, like you can see the separator the split is nothing but it's a it you will get a certain kind of string where you find that separator so i'll find the separator where there is this space that is empty space if there is empty space then that is a token because first you'll have bearer and after that you'll be having the token if i show you here in this website so you can see right in authorization we have a bearer and a token so if i give this a split function and give this as empty space here then it will be storing this token so that's what i am trying to do and after the token uh, after the splitting i need this a first one so that's why i have given this first one and now i'll be storing a variable in this so jwt here we are going to verify our uh, token with the help of jwt library so jwt verify and the first parameter is we are going to give our token which we have uh, uh, received from our request headers and authorization and the second parameter will be our secret code so our secret code was in auth dot controller so yeah while logging only right we are signing in the user with the secret code that is a secret key one two three so similarly we are going to uh, have this secret key that should be the same so that is why only it will be able to verify so this is the string so we need to give it is in a strings don't worry whatever this is a vulnerable text right so we are going to give this as a process dot env uh, methods uh, while deploying this project so don't worry our code or our credentials will not be exposed so this is done so once the verification is done we no need to give any kind of other function just a day jwt's inbuilt verify function will verify it for ourselves we don't need to check any other thing. that's why jwt is so popular because it simplifies our task then we are going to store it in our body in a user this user so if the verification is correct and the user is fetched then it will be stored in the request or body once it, this is done the next function should be carried out that's why i'm giving this a next now uh, i'll just log this uh, error what i'm getting so i'll log this error and after this i'll just uh, have a status of 500 and i'll send this error to the user if any error occurs and we also need to occur on a, or we also need to handle another function here so that function is nothing but if there is no token uh, received or uh, if there is no token in the browser then we need to handle that as well so if there is no token then i need to send this response to the user so 401 and i'll send a json here saying that it is not authorized so i'll send this message as not authorized yeah that'll be it and this is the verification part now what we need to do is we need to load data uh, regarding this uh, token right so we are going to decrypt the data so after this i'll decrypt the data first we need to write this route so inside route uh yeah this one here we need to give a router dot post and here user data is yes, data and this second parameter will be a auth variables that is auth middleware so by this middleware only it will verify that token and our third will be the user data that is nothing but uh, we will passing the token to this right so that is a user data and now in the auth controller we need to define that function 
so this throwing error let's see what is error yeah it's user data because we have just defined it but we have not a wrote function for it so we'll write function and uh, export it there so here user data equal to and this will be asynchronous because we are handling with all jwt and all those stuff right so and request response as well as the arrow function now here i'll have a try catch block in try i'll just give the status because all the verification all those things will happen right so i'll just request the status and send some information send first i'll give this success as true second one i'll send the data whichever i'm getting from this body so request dot body dot user so if you check in our auth middleware function i'm sending this into the request body dot user if the user has been decrypted so that's why i'm sending this into the data and i'll have i need to handle the catch also right so rest dot status this should be of 400 because 400 seems to be a error function so send error so let's save this and we are still getting the error okay we need to export it here right so uh, in auth controller you need to import user data and we forgot something we need to export here as well the function so user data now we won't be getting any kind of error yeah now there's a no error so we are done with the backend part uh, before trying to uh, decrypt this from the front end let's just try with the backend part only whether we are successful or not so what we'll try is uh we'll try with the postman as you people already know postman is nothing but it is a http client so if you're not having the front end so test backend this is the great tool to have so we'll have this http localhost 5000 author user data so this is the route i'm having if you check that uh, the backend will be having of course a 5000 and in server if you check this is the auth and after auth what i'm having is user data so that's why i'm giving that in the postman so http localhost 5000 auto user data so this will be of get first of all because we are just getting it so instead of get we'll be having the post and now as i've told the token will be in authorization headers right so instead of going this year we can give authorization all those are simply in post when we are having this as authorization and here we are having many uh, options so here we'll have this a bearer token because this is what we need to have the token so this is some dummy data they given so instead of this we'll just put our data uh, put our token so this is our token let's just copy and paste it in our postman to test it out so instead of giving it directly in front end uh, without knowing whether it's working or not we'll try it out here so we'll just remove this double quotes and if we click on send we should get some data so yeah so if we can see this is a decrypted version of our uh, token first it will say success because if we check in our code and auth dot controller it will return me two that is first it will send me success is true and the second one will be the data so success is true and the data will be of id user email and whatever the stored in our token so this is a great way of uh, getting or decrypting your token before going into the front end we'll also see whether if we remove one character also it will throw us error because it won't verify so it says to json web token error invalid signature so this is for backend in the next video we'll see how to actually decrypt it from the front end back so we are making a very good progress in this project so in the last video we have decrypted the data from this token whichever the token we give here we are getting the decrypted version if that 
token is a wrong then it will just give out as an error message so in this video we are going to handle this decrypted data to the front end so we are going to send this data to the front end and we'll retrieve there so we need to go into the vs code and the front end part will be in dashboard right so this is the dashboard to make any kind of such request we need to import axios because we are making a http request also right to backend so that's why we are going to need this axios so import axios from axios and then uh, we have your name and email right so instead of having this name and email uh, we are going to have this as a state variables so first of all we'll have a use state also here use state use state and we are going to declare variables here so const name and set name this will be equal to use state and first they both will be of null because a no value will be stored inside those and the second thing is uh, we are going to need a function to load our data so that's why i'm giving this function name as a load data load data this will be of arrow function as well and here let's have a try clutch block because we are going to have the http request right? sometimes it may give us a correct uh, result sometimes it it will give a wrong result so first of all we'll need to get a token sorry yeah first of all we need to retrieve a token from the local story so const token equal to await so while we are using await we need to have this as an asynchronous function so asynchronous await json dot parse and we are going to get it from local storage dot get item and what is the variable which we have stored so let's check that so it's uh, the key is data so we are going to give as a data so data and we are going to get a result for this so res await dot sorry uh, axios dot get and now we are going to use this auth variable so auth route and also user data is the route so user data and the next one i'll just send this uh, header part so headers and the object for this is first one will be authorization so authorization and as i've told you in the previous video only the authorization the first part will be of bearer and second part will be of token so bearer and the second part will be of token token whatever the variable uh, like whatever we have retrieved retrieved we are using this variable here so this ends our function and so once we get this response then we are going to handle that so if res dot data dot success that means if we get this as a true value then we are going to set name as res dot data dot data else we are going to like if there is any kind of error or if there is a verification is failed in the token then we are going to send back our user to the log, uh, login or register page so we are going to need that also so to do that we need to import that use navigate 
use navigate from react router dom from react router dom yeah and we'll have this initialized so const navigate equal to use navigate so use navigate function here yeah now we have uh, declared it we can use it here navigate to login screen so the route is nothing but a login screen if something goes wrong then we need to give here i'll just console log the error whichever we get and yeah now we are done we need to execute this function also right so we are going to execute this function so we'll do that in use effects so that means whenever this page is loaded first this function will be loaded like first this function will be called so we'll call this load data function and i'll give here a uh, empty braces so yeah use effect is already imported now whatever the data which we have retrieved will be stored in name so this is the name we are going to use so where is our name and uh, email yeah here it was right so here we'll use this javascript and have user dot sorry name is a variable right so name dot and if we check in our postman it's a user and email so we'll write the same first one will be user and the second one will be name dot email so let's save and try it in our browser it says uh, which a source factory is not found okay let's see what's the error here we've written the name also correctly if we check in our uh, use state it's name and set name it's null so it's getting our error okay let's check here module not found error you attempted to import okay there's something wrong in import uh use data we don't need this actually because we are not using this so we can just uh, remove this line yeah let's see yeah we are not getting any kind of error and let's check here okay our page goes blank okay what do we have in front end uh i think there's something wrong in importing uh get okay let's see in the back end this is a auth controller yeah everything seems to be fine let's see in auth throat okay this is not the post we are just getting the data uh, user data from the token right so get will be fine so let's check whether this works or not okay let's re reload our page okay still it's not reloading okay we'll delete this data and uh, we'll start again the localhost 3000 it was yeah and the login it was my email id and the password Uh, this is not our email id uh, yeah this is my email id let's click on submit and it's still giving this white screen okay let's see what the error is the console and cannot read user oh is it and dashboard.js okay let's try with optional chaining so this question mark is optional chaining so if we give this question mark here if the 
user or email value is there then it will import or else it will just give you the empty uh, value there so let's try with this method okay yeah now if you can see uh, we've got the details of my name and as well as uh, my email id so this is how we are going to decrypt our uh, token and get the details from the token so in the next video we'll cover how to write the functionality button for a logout because if we click on logout here it's not happening anything because we have not written any kind of function for the logout button so in the next video we'll see how to do that hello guys welcome back in the previous video we've seen how to decrypt our token and get the details from it and now in this video we'll see how to write functionality for this logout button so without any further wasting any time let's get into the code so if you see here this is our logout button right so what we are going to do is we are going to write this uh, on click listener for this so on click yeah on click and the function i'll be writing will be the out logout function only so here we'll write the function uh, let's create a function here so const logout uh this will also be a arrow function so we'll just follow that syntax and the first part is when uh, someone clicks on the logout button the user credentials like whatever the stored in the application the local storage it should be erased so what i'm going to do is local storage variable then i'm going to say remove item and what is the variable which we gave for uh, variable in local storage is data so we are going to remove this data variable so if the data variable is no more that means the data uh, user data is no more in the application then what we need to do is we need to navigate that user to the home page so home page so let's copy sorry save this file and check our website so if i click this logout button yeah so it immediately brought me back to the home page uh, like it's a root page that is nothing but a login so first i'll check whether the details are there in local storage or not so let's go to the application here so application so if you can see here there's no data and no token stored here so that means the user data has been erased from the application so if we again log in back then the details will be stored here so let me try that back yeah and the password will be this so if i click on submit and you can immediately see our page has routed to the dashboard page and the local storage data is variable and we have this token added so with this token only it has got my name and my email id so in the next video we'll see how to uh, update the details here so we haven't connected this page to the database and all these things right so the next video we'll see how to do that welcome back guys so in this video we are going to see how to update the user details like uh, if we go into our application we are having the we are going to change our passwords right so how that functionality is going to work we'll going to see in this video so let's go back to our a code and before typing anything in our front end first we need to connect our a backend right so let's go to our backend and create another route for this for updating so what i'm going to do is i'm going to have a router dot post post why post because we are going to submit the details to database so that's why i'm going to use as a post function so update and the function can be update user this function we are going to create it so let's get into the controller yeah it throws me error because there is no update user function so here we are going to need that function created so const update user equal to and this is going to be a arrow function and i need to export this function as well so update user and now if i import here then my error goes off here 
so i'm going to import the same file from the same file so update user yeah so this should work now yeah now we are going to write this function here first thing this should be a synchronous function because this is going to delay the database right so sometimes it may delay or uh, we need some values to get this after that only we need to get to the another next line so this will be having the request and response uh, objects here and first we need to get the values from the user like from the website so we are going to have this request dot body and we are going to destructure it to some variable let's do that as a update user only and after that we are going to have that uh, mail right because if we want to change the values in database uh, each record will be having only unique email id because a person cannot have a two email ids or uh, with a same email id you cannot have a two accounts so that's why we are going to deal with a unique value so unique will be value will be here either id or a email so we are going to check the, in the database wherever this mail is there we are going to change that password so email plays a main role here so i'm going to create a mail variable also so in this update user only we'll be having that mail uh, object so update user dot email and the next variable we are going to get is const user and this will be the await function because we are going to deal it with the database so user user is nothing but this is a database of which we have created a token for so if we check in our models this is a user model right so user anything but a user model and now we need to find find one so here in this find one what it means is we are going to find one record with email so we are going to write this email so what it does is when it finds a one this email and that will return this record and store it in a user variable now we'll check so now we'll check the condition with the if condition so first to update the password first the user should present right so we are going to check that if the user is present then we are going to await bcrypt dot compare because we are going to take a current password right if you check in our application we are having current password so first what we need to do is first we need to check the whether current password is correct or matching with our values in the database if that password is correct then only we are going to let a user store the new password so first thing we need to compare so this will be the same thing while we having the login function right we have compared the values what user entered to the database values so we are going to compare update user dot current password so this will be the variable current password with the user password the user dot password yeah so if this condition is correct that means if the user is present and is password matches with the database then we are going to save the new password from the user so first we are going to while saving password we are going to save it in encrypted way right so we are going to generate a salt here so salt await bcrypt dot gen salt and inside this i'm going to give a salt rounds so i'll give a 15 salt rounds here so 15 salt rounds and then i'm going to generate a hashed password here so hashed password here await bcrypt dot hash so this will give us encrypted one and the value we need to give is a 
password which a user enters so update user dot password with the salt round so i'm going to give just salt so because this is a salt variable which we have generated a salt using bcrypt dot gen salt so as the hash password has been created now what we need to do is we need to check user dot find id find by id and update because we are going to update right the password so first one will be the user dot id so with the user id we are going to find that one and we are going to update and here i'll send an object first one will be the name obviously the name will be same we are not going to let a user change his name for this tutorial if you want to change you can uh, put another function for changing the name of the user so name and another one i'll give is email email we won't let uh, the user change because that's a unique uh, main account will be on the email id if we change that then whole our encrypt token all that will be in a big problem so we no need to change your email and then this email and the last one will be the password i need to store so password and password variable and give this a hashed password so yeah and i'll uh, give a error function if we get any error so i need to handle this also right so error function for this and if there is any error then return response to the user with a 400 status and send a message that something went wrong something went wrong and we are going to write a health condition also so in else condition we are going to return that means if everything is successful then we are going to return a response with a 200 symbol so that means correct so sorry it was it's not a return it should be the status so status and here also status 200 status and i'm going to send a message to the user first one i'll send a success as a true variable and second message password updated successfully yeah password updated successfully so we have handled the both uh, error and all if the user itself is not there we are we need to err like handle that error also right so we are going to give else condition here so we are going to return the response to the user saying that there's no user no user or something went wrong would be a correct response something went wrong yeah so our backend is ready uh, once we get the correct connection correct message we will go with the front end part so yeah it's connected successfully everything is fine so in this dashboard we are going to need this update submit button function here before going to update the update submit button function first uh this is a simple uh functions right uh, that means input fields 
just a password but we are not checking with the limit like he should enter this characters and the special character all those things like we are not checking the security so we are going to use the same function which uh, we have used in register.js so if we open register.js we have used this npm package called use form right so we are going to use the same thing for form validation so let's import that first and after that we need to go into the form um let's scroll down here yeah here form we need to same write this kind of function here so if we check in the completed register function we are having this on submitted on submit handle submit and then register submit so we are going to have this uh, handle submit so handle submit similar to this So first i'm going to remove this uh, update submit and instead that i'm going to give this handle submit and inside this i'm going to give a function as a update submit okay now this is okay handle submit is not defined okay let's see what we have imported here Uh, we have simply okay we need to have this also right uh this const function here this object also we need to have uh, let's copy and paste it down here yeah now if we save this file yeah we are not getting any kind of errors that's a proxy error uh, we'll deal that later so we'll check with the form the form tag down here on submit is done and the name okay we need to fill this value right so whatever the user is having like whichever the user logged we are going to have that username here so value will be nothing but here we have written the name dot user right so the same thing we need to have here so name and this optional chaining dot user if you use this optional chaining it will not throw you error or it will not give you the blank page if the user is there it will mention the username uh, in that field if the user is not there it will just simply uh, give us an empty uh, input field so username and and the email also will follow the same thing email name optional chaining then email okay and now password here we need to deal with pa password the main thing is when giving the password the user should have some kind of restrictions like he should have at least one number at least one special character one uppercase one lowercase all this security features we need to mention or if the user is giving the weak password we should not submit the form so similar to what we did in register.js if you remember uh, if i scroll down here you can see the password which we gave here it has a required like a register password this is a variable name a required and this kind of a pattern so we'll do the same thing here so we'll just simply copy and paste this in our current password here i'll paste this let's save if we get any kind of errors okay we are not getting any kind of errors the password uh, this should be the cu password as is a current password because that's what i have used in the controller if you see here dot cu password so current password variable is this so let's save this and in the new password also we are going to give the same uh, limitations like required should be true pad this pattern should follow the password and the minimum eight digits like it should start with eight not less than eight digits the password should not be a lot less than eight digits so what i'll do here save this and here we can give the password as a password only and here for this we'll give 
as a C password. That means a confirm password. You can use a better variables uh, in your application. I'm just demonstrating this for an understanding purpose. So what we'll do now, we can go to our update submit function. So our update submit function, yeah here we have update submit function right so in this first we are going to fetch the details from our form like whenever the user enters we are going to fetch that variables right so for that we'll give a synchronous because we are going to deal with the database and the first one will be the data because whenever we use use form uh, npm package all the data when user enters will be stored in this data variable only now the first thing we need to check with our if condition is whether the password and the confirm password are same or not so for that data dot password triple equal to that means it should be exactly same so i'm going to give the c password if this is same then only we are going to update our uh, user details in our database so i'm going to give a variable as a update user yeah update user then i am going to create this object with email name dot email and password will be the password which user entered that is a data dot password and another one we are going to send is a current password right? current password also we need to send it to the back end whether uh, the current password matches with our database password or not so data dot cu password yeah we are going to send these three details to back end and what we'll do is now we are going to require this axios so axios dot and then we need to post these values to the database so here i'll give first will be the route so if you check here we give auth then user data so here we need to give auth and update auth and update second one will be the function here sorry second one will be the variable which we are going to send update user then we are going to handle this so then we are going to use promises here so if if the posted the vari variable is posted to the backend successfully then the response function first i'll check if res dot data dot success that means if i get a success message from the backend then i'll give a toast so before writing toast uh, we have not imported so we'll import the toast also so these are the two toasts related imports so let's copy and paste it here yeah and we need to write this toast container also it is giving error so i'll give this a toast and we are going to have this toast container somewhere here yeah so we can give us a toast container simple tag here then it's giving me some kind of error in 28th line let's check okay yeah as i've didn't uh, written any kind of thing it's giving me error so toast dot success and here i need to give that success message okay s-u-c-c -C, yeah the success message that is res dot data dot msg so if we check in our auth controller the user is there and the success is true we'll get a message saying password updated successfully so we are going to get the same thing and the object will be position toast or position you can give this in any kind of position i am giving the top right because that's what i followed for all the things in this application so top right and another will be the auto class so auto close that means it will close in this 2500 milliseconds that means it's a 2.5 seconds 
and the theme i'll give as uh, colored okay and then after this what i'll do is i'll just uh, remove the credentials from the local storage because whenever the user has successfully updated his or her password in the application i'll just log out that user to the login screen then with the new password the user should log in back so for that local storage so once the successful message has shown local storage dot remove item and the data is a variable right as i told in the previous video in the logout function the data var uh, variable is data and i'll give a set time out function uh, because once the user has uh, submitted his or her password the use a uh, password should successfully save in database right so i'll uh, that takes around one or two seconds and we should able to send this toast message to user also so i'm going to wait a four seconds then we are going to navigate to the user uh, like home page the route of login js so set timeout and we are going to give this function so the first one will be window.navigate sorry window.location dot href and i'm going to reroute the user to the login.js with the delay of around three to four seconds so let's give 3500 that means 3.5 seconds and if the success message is not there we need to deal the error message also right so else we are going to give another toast here so let's simply copy paste this toast and here instead of success we are going to change this as a error so error rest or data message color yeah all seems to be fine here and we are going to deal this then after then we are going to deal the catch function also right so here catch dot catch error variable and the arrow function here so i'll just console log the error so log error yeah let's see if we get any kind of error okay we are not getting any kind of error and another thing we are also if the user entered the password and the current so sorry the confirm password is wrong then we are going to deal with that also right so we'll just give the else condition for that so after this if you're having here the else so else we are going to paste that toast and instead of the success we'll give as a error and a message will be passwords doesn't match so if the password and current confirm password are correct then only the user should be able to update his or her password so let's see if we missed anything okay let's save and try our application if there's any error we'll get to know there so yeah if you see here uh, previously we didn't had a my name in the name field and the email field and also you can see these two fields are not editable these are not editable we can just view so that user will not be able to change the name and email so current password and the new password i'll enter so first i'll try with uh, the wrong password wrong current password and the new password i'll give as yeah and the confirm password will be this okay let me give a wrong password a uh, wrong confirm password also so if i click on submit it should give me a toast message saying that the password doesn't match so i clicked on submit
uh nothing is happening here okay let's close this and check clicking on submit okay so i think we need to debug this why it's not working so our update function seems to be okay so let's minimize our uh, function so update submit and this logout this load date also and if we see have we okay the errors is still not used yeah we also need to deal errors right so if the password is not uh, like strong password we need to throw out an error so what we'll do is we'll just copy this thing and paste here so this one and we need to change here with a cu password that means it's a current password and for this also we'll try the same thing yeah this is a password the correct thing and here this will be the c password let's save and try whether this is working or not yeah now it's showing the password and should be of six to five characters and it should have, have at least one uppercase lowercase number and a special character okay now let's try it in our console whether we are getting any kind of error let's remove and let's remove all the things and give from start yeah first i'm going to give my current password yeah it satisfies all the conditions and the new password i'll give yeah this will be the new password and in confirm password i'll give a one digit wrong so that i should know whether the new password and confirm password uh wrong giving working or not so if i click on submit yeah it's giving the password doesn't match so i'll just give the same password here yeah so still i gave the wrong current password here so i'll give the correct password here as well and now if i click on submit this is being pasted the password but i didn't got any successful message yeah now we got a password updated successfully and it has redirected me to the root page that is a login page so now we need to try with our new password so let's try with our new password whether it's working or not and here i'll try with my new password so this should work click on submit okay it's still taking time let's check whether the database has refreshed or not okay as you see in the back end it has loaded up and login successful we got a message of login successful with all our details so we can change our password anytime we want so we have completed this decrypting the token and also updating the password in this section hello and welcome back to the new section in the previous section we have seen how to decrypt our token and also update our password and in this video this we this section will be a very interesting and verification part that is a email verification uh, before uh, giving this email verification whatever email you put into the register it will register and whatever you you put in login it will log in you but it won't ask you for any kind of verification like a you won't get any link to your mail and you won't be able to verify it can be any dummy mail also logging into your site so we are going to face up that challenge and create a verification so we've created and we have 
decrypted and have this update details section and if i log out then this will log me out so this is the npm package we are going to use for email verification so if i click on this node mailer npm this will take me to the home page of node mailer so this is the npm command to install node mailer and you can see all the details it's been more than a two and a half million weekly downloads and all the documentation you will be having here so let's get started with email verification in this video so first let me log out yeah and now our finished product and this is the one and the same and what we'll do we'll also remove our record in database so that we won't be having any credentials so it's deleting the document yeah so now we don't have any users in our database so what we'll do is first we need to install this in node more mailer right this should be installed in the backend so let's stop this process and npm i node mailer enter so this package needs to be installed in the backend only because with the help of backend only we are sending mails to the user okay that has been successfully installed let's run our server nodemon server once the database is successfully connected we will create a file oh, yeah database is connected and we are going to create a config file here with a mail sender mail sender dot js so in this file we are going to write a function that will send a mail to the user for verification first let's just import the node mailer package which we have installed a few minutes back so require node mailer yeah this is the thing and let's just start writing our function module dot exports equal to and this will be the asynchronous because we are going to deal with the database and all kind of stuff so we are giving two parameters first one will be the data which is obviously the mail and all kind of thing and second one will be the mail type that is we are going to verify user this will be the arrow function here here we'll have a try catch block so that if anything goes wrong we'll be having ready a catch block so let's just go to the documentation before implementation so this is the official nodemailer.com site for this npm package so let it load yeah we have completed this uh, installation of nodemailer and let's just scroll down yeah this is what we need the transporter so let's copy this thing here and we'll paste this in try try block so here we are giving transporter so we can give our own variable i'll give this as a mail config so mail config and own mailer and this will create a transporter that is all details it will collect and this will be uh, instead of this ethereal we are going to use gmail so i'll be having this a uh, gmail.com so i'm going to send verification mails to the user using my gmail account and here port you can use this or you can write anything else uh, we are going to have this 465 port so that's what we are using and instead of as we are using 465 it says we should be using true so secure should be true then auth so this is the most important thing here we need to have our email address and the password this is not our account password instead we need to have a application password so i'll tell you how to create an application so before that we are going to have email here my gmail is epic 
teachings. Adrit gmail.com so this will be my gmail so that should be in quotes yeah it's in quotes and the password here we should give our app password so if you go into google i'll show you the documentation here if we type app password gmail so you should not enter your gmail account password that will be the most vulnerable so for every applications we can create a different password in gmail so if we go here in the documentation so it tells you how to create the stuff so first you need to go to your gmail and click on this you need to have a two-step verification to your gmail account then you need to go into the security then you need to enable all the two-step verification process and after that you need to select app selected device and generate an application so in my uh, project i have selected as a auth application so if you give a auth application name and click on generate you will be given a 16 digit password so after that if you click on done then a password will be created for you so i'm going to paste that password here so paste it here yeah this is my application password and now what i need to do is i need to send a mail right using these credentials all these things so let's do that here below after the mail config i'll have a mail options so const mail options here we are going to define other content and who the user should be sending so mail options from should be my mail id that is epic teachings at the rate gmail.com and after that uh, we need a two mail also so two mail uh, while entering the register will get that so here i'm going to use from data which we have uh, given here as a parameter so data dot email then we need a subject also right for a uh, email to be sent so subject for now i'll just give as a verify your mail for jwt app now i need to give a content so I'll simply i'll give a contact sent this mail for verification yeah so now we need to take mail options and mail config and send a mail to the user so i'll have another await here so mail config dot need to send mail this is the default send mail uh, function from node mailer and i need to send a mail options and we need to catch if there's anything went wrong so i'll just console log the error so console log error so save it let's see if we get any kind of errors so no errors now we need to import this mail sender in our controller so let's go to our controller and we need to import first of all so const mail sender equal to require and we need to go back to config folder and in config folder mail sender yeah now we need to send this after registration so here after saving our database uh, our details into the database here i'll give as await await 
mail sender is a function and I'm going to pass two parameters right so first one will be the data that is nothing but this new entry so I'm going to give this new entry and second one I'll just send this text as a verif verify mail so let's save if we get any kind of errors server has started and mongodb also successfully created it's connected so let's see if we having any users in database no we don't have any and we'll also change a message here so registration successful yeah so registration successful okay then we'll go into our application this is the ongoing application which we are building that's why it's in local host and let me try to log in with my mail id so this is my mail id sorry i need to register right first in order to log in so first register myself so i'll give my name my email and my personal password and this password should be strong or else it will throw you error so let's click on submit and we'll see if we are getting any kind of response here like toast messages uh, we are not getting any toast messages here let's see now vs code if we are getting any error okay no we are not getting any error here as well let's check in our database whether the stored or not our data yeah our data is stored is verified is false so let's check our gmail if we got that mail or not uh, we still have not got that mail yeah now we got so if you check here this is the time it's a zero minutes ago so this is just now sent and verify your mail so we have successfully took a step to get a verification mail now the next step is we need to get a verify link and if we click on that link it will verify and convert our database object is verified into true so we'll do that in our next video welcome back guys in the previous video we have registered with our official mail id to confirm our email address and this is what we are in and now let's go to our vs code the r code and now we need to uh, what i've told in the previous video is when we get this mail we are going to have this confirmation uh, link in our body uh, of the mail right so to do that we need to first save our token so to save our token in database we need to have this model file created so let's create the token token model so this will be another document and here const mongoose require from mongoose and i'll have this as a token schema token schema equal to mongoose dot schema and in this function i'll have a object so the first one will be the user id type would be string and i'll trim this so that it should not have any spaces before and after the string and i'll have this as a required required as a true yeah we have, uh, have a one object in token schema that is user id the next one will be our token we'll be saving a token right so this will be that variable so type 
this will be also a string and i'll trim this also so that it won't have any uh, white spaces before and after this will be also the required one and the next one will be okay we'll just store a uh, user id and token that's it and we'll have a timestamps as well so timestamps will be a true so let's save and here we need to export this document so const token equal to mongoose dot model so now we are creating a model and our database will be the token we are going to send this schema token schema and now module dot exports will be token so whenever we are going to use this token we are exporting as a token name now we are going to the mail sender and here we, we are creating a token so let's import token equal to require and the mail sender is in config and token is models right so models right so we need to go one back then models then token model yeah and we are going as i've said we are going to uh, store token in token database right so before storing first we need to generate so with the help of bcrypt.js we are going to generate that token so const bcrypt equal to require bcrypt js let's save and see if we are getting any kind of error okay no errors so let's start with creating a token after this transporter will create so const verify token equal to await bcrypt and here i'll use a hash sync function you can use hash or hashing function and here the first one will be i'll sending a user data sorry user id so with the help of user id only i'm going to hash and create a token so this i'll convert to string so to string yeah and i'll give a salt round so we need salt rounds also so we can give 10 or 15 to create a token for us and after this creating we need to save it in our database also right so let's just save this one so const token equal to new token so this is a model i've imported this is a token so in this i'll i have two right user id and as well as token if you check in model we have user id and token so we'll create the same here so user id will be the data dot id and token will be whatever generated in the previous line this is a verified token so verify token yeah verify token and after that we are going to save it in our database so await keyword again so await token dot save and here we had previously just content right here we are going to send this token so for that i am going to create another variable here const content equal to and here i'm going to not just send a line but i'm going to send some html so that's why i'm going to have this 
quotes and then i'll give a div so div and inside this div i'll have a h1 so here i'll have a h1 tag with closing h1 tag as well so the first one will be i'll have a text as please verify your mail by clicking this link so i'm going to send this that link in a anchor tag so here i'll have a break and after that i'll have a anchor tag here so in this anchor tag need a href right so href equal to and this strings for a double quotes and http and our local host is there right so local host i'll explain you in a one minute why we are writing this so local host 3000 and verify then this raw token so the token name is verify token right so verify token and for this i need to have a text also so click this token so let's save we are not getting any errors it is a very important thing to check if you are getting any errors while having any kind of modification so i'll be sending uh, this content in the mail body so the first line will be the please verify your mail by clicking this link and we'll be having an anchor tag and this anchor tag when we click on this it will take me to this route so if we go into that route the page will be the application will be contact to our database and we'll check this verify token to our database which will be having another token database here so the, to the token and it will verify and give us successful message if it is verified successfully if it's not verified successfully it will give a error message so we are going to send this uh, whole thing here so instead of this string here i'm going to have a content and this will be a html not just a string so html so let's go back to our database and uh, we'll delete this uh, record so no data in our database so far and uh, let's check it out once again yeah these are the fields right yeah i'll click on submit and we should get our registration a uh, successful message yeah so registration is successful and we'll check whether we got any uh, mail yeah we got a mail so previously it was just empty like 13 minutes ago and now it's a zero minutes ago that means we got this just now and if we can see the body please verify your mail by clicking this link and we got this link so if you hover on that link below we get this uh, right so that means local host to verify and all those so if we see that link we are having slashes in between so we shouldn't have slashes in between if we have slashes in between of our address then that will our react router will consider that as a, another route so we need to remove that slashes so we are going to remove that slashes in our code so what we'll do is here only we'll have this replace all so not just first character we are going to have all the slashes so the first one will be the appearance so this one slash 
that should be replaced by just a empty so we are going to remove we'll just refresh here and we are going to remove so let's remove this yeah and let's just go back and submit again so we are going to submit this so we click on submit again it will register let me refresh i got a successful message here as well and let's just see yeah we got another mail here and it says please verify your mail by clicking this link and if i hover on this you can see the below we are not having any kind of slashes so if i click on this link it will take me to a page but we are not having any kind of page so in the next video we will be creating in a front end that is in react we will be creating the verify page hello guys and welcome back to the new video so in this video we are going to see how the verification does so so far we have completed uh, sending a mail to the user for a verification and we also got this verification link but if we click on this link the value in our database that is is verified should be turned into true so this includes both front end and back end so let's get started as i've said we need to include back end here to change the value in the database so we are going to create another route here so for that purpose let's give a route here so that route would be post because we are going to change that so router dot post let's give this uh, route as a verify mail verify mail and i'll give this uh, function name as a verify mail verify mail so it will throw me error because this function has not been imported from anywhere else so before importing let's just define a function here so below this update user we can define our new function so const verify mail this will be the arrow function yeah so we've defined the empty function let's just first export and then import so verify mail i'm exporting it now let me import here so that we will be get rid of this kind of error below in the console so let's give here verify mail yeah now the error will be gone server connected successfully and yeah mongodb also connected successfully let's define this function now as we are going to deal with database this should be a synchronous function request and response function and we'll have here the try catch block try catch block is absolutely necessary because when we are dealing with database we there might be a few cases where there won't be any internet connection with the user or there might be some uh, error in your application or server side so if something goes wrong in the try it will catch that error so let's define here first we'll take a variable uh, as a token detail so that first we need to get the token from a url right so if you see in our application this is the token so what we need to do first is first we need to collect this token from the front end and submit it to the back end where that token is to the user so we'll be verifying in that way so once this is section is done you will be getting a complete detail how this will be working so first i'm going to check in the database so token let me show you the database first so this is the mongodb right so this is the user's database so whenever the user registers they will be having here a records but when they create like when we submit and a mail has been sent their token will be sent also stored here so that 
it means the user has not been verified it we have a token so if you check this it has started with a dollar two and ended with e r e p r w so if you check in the application also we should be having the same thing e p r w and starts with dollar two a so this token will be stored in the database and it will fetch and send a mail to the user now we are going to find that uh, token so token dot find one and in this function we need to give this object so here what we are giving is we are going to send the data from front end so i'll send this as a request dot body dot token and the next one as we found the a token value and search through our database now we need to check if that token is there or not in our database so token detail so if the token is available then what i need to do is i need to update the user uh, like in user uh, database let me show you that this is a user database so in this user database i need to update this is verified to true so i need to change that value here let me change that user dot find one and update so if you type you will be getting a uh, many suggestions so here you can give this find one and update so here we need to send a id or something related to the user so if we see in our database we have a user id right here starting with six three double seven ending with the dfo and if we check in tokens will be having the same user id 637 and the tfo so with the help of this user id we will be checking the record in our database then we will be able to find so once you find that we will be changing is verified to true so let's do that here so first i need to send an object that is id an id field token detail so if we found the token detail record it will be ha having a user id right so i'll be sending that user id only and after that is verified should be changed into true so this is the first one and once the uh, verification is done and the is verified is also changed into true we no longer re need the token in our database it just doesn't make sense right once the verification is done and this is changed into true then we don't have any reason storing the token in our database we can just delete that instead of storing and having a storage occupancy we can delete this token because the verification is done so we can go ahead and delete this token so how do we do that we'll be having another await and here token dot find one and delete so find one and delete here also i'll send this so here i'll send this token so whenever it searches for this record having this token it will delete so request dot body dot token and once this is done let i'll send a response to the user to the front end so res dot send i'll send a object first one will be the success message which will be true and the second one will be this message saying that email verified success fully so this we are done we need to handle this catch block also here just will send an error or we can also console log so i'll just send an error success will be the false and the message i'll be sending is I'll, let me send some invalid token or something went wrong invalid token will be the good choice because something went wrong means it can be anything wrong so we are done with the backend part 
as we have done with the backend part sorry with the if is handled else also we need to have right so else condition will just send this error invalid token yeah now the if else part is taken care and the try catch block has been taken care now what we need to do is we need to send token from front end to this back end so we need to do that in the page so if we go into front end src pages and we need to create here a page called verified email so once we do that then if our, our application we need to define with this route that local host 3000 slash verify slash the token id so we'll be doing that in our next part the front end part and there we'll be completing our verification welcome back guys in this video we will be concentrating on the front end part of how to verify so as i've told in the previous video we are going to create a page here by verify mail so verify email dot js so i'm going to just give this rfc and let me import that in the app.js so in the app.js first we need to import it import verify email and here we need to give that route path we need to give here so the path will be in our application we are having it has a verify and after that the token so we need to give in that way only so slash verify and after that we need to give token right so the token parameter we need to send in this way with a colon and after that what are the variable name we are giving it then we need to give a element the page so the element will be our verify email so before verify email we need to give this in this public or private routes so it should be public route because the user still has not logged in so he won't be having any kind of criteria uh, to go in so that should be in public route only. then only he will be able to or uh, like verify himself so first we'll give as a protected routes here so protected routes and in this we can give verify mail verify mail yeah so let's just save this and here we'll give something in this div let's try with some h1 verify mail page so let's save and see if this is working or not okay uh, let's click on this token again okay that is being redirected again why is that so let's see what we have sent here a local ocean verify slash and this verify token right so in the verify email in the app.js we are giving verify only okay we've done a blunder mistake here we have given a protected route that's why it's redirecting to the route uh, root page that is the login so here we need to give it this as a public not protected so public routes so let's save and check once again so we'll remove this page and click on this token to verify our mail, email so once i click on this yeah i'm getting this verify mail page so now i need to design this something that says if the user has been verified i need to get some a uh, verified message if the user has failed the token is mismatching then he need to get the invalid token or something went wrong as a message let's head back to our vs code and edit our front end page so here first of all what we are going to do is we are going to uh, 
import that token right so we are going to need that token for that we need to have this uh, npm package like from react routed or only it's part of so the first one will be a use params that means whatever it's in the url we are going to use it from react router dom so this is a package name and i'll need to create an object here so const params equal to use params so first of all what i'll do is i'll just print out whether i'm getting this params from the url or not so what i'll do i'll give another h2 here and in this javascript curly braces i'll give params and the variable of the a token so if you remember we gave the variable as a token so whatever you give we should be using this only so let's give here as a token and save now let's see whether it's appearing or not so yeah if you see whatever is there in the url the token starting with dollar two and ending with jep rw so jep rw so we are getting that now we need to use this and send it to the backend so that the backend will be able to verify the token and send us a correct response by changing the value of is verified into true so what we'll do is whenever the user comes into this page immediately the function should trigger and start verification process should be started so to do that we need a use effect use effect will import use effect so use effect hook the use effect hook whenever the page renders this function will be executed so use effect and inside it takes an arrow function and this function let's name it as a token verify in this function we will be sending a token from front end to back end and let's give here this braces and now we need to define this token verify somewhere here so const token verify this will be the arrow function that's a es6 feature of using so easily the functions instead of writing the function keyword and all those this is a simpler way and he, this will be a synchronous function because this will be connecting or communicating with a backend here as i've told if you are not sure or if are, there is any uh connectivity with internet then we need to give a try catch blocks try catch block and the first one i'll do is take a response from the api that is await axios oh i need to import axios also so let me import axios from axios yeah now i will be able to use this axios now axios dot post because we are posting the token to the backend so here what we'll give is we'll give auth and verify email or verify mail because we have defined here is verify iphone mail so we need to use the same route verify mail and the second parameter will be the data which we want to send to the backend then the data will be sent in the variable of token and that token is stored in parents dot token yeah that's uh, api and now we are going to see the response what we are getting here first of all so let's see log res dot data whether we are getting successful message or not if we get successful message then we'll 
uh, try to uh, do all the things in this uh, function also so let's save and check here yeah let's see first database if you are having anything so let's refresh yeah it's still the user verified is false so let me remove this and click on this link again the user getting email and what we'll do we'll check in the console so this is a console we are getting an object is it okay it says email verified successfully so let's check in the database whether is verified is true or false yeah you can check is verified is true now and the token also should be able to delete so yeah our code is working successfully fine user token deleted and the user has been changed into is verified now that means he is a verified user so let's go ahead and change our front end page this is our waste code and here instead of this we'll just comment this out and we'll send a toast here to send a toast we need a few libraries right so let's copy those libraries from here react toastify and the toast container both of them let's paste it down here and somewhere here i'll mention this token sorry toast container so toast container and now i should be able to use toast so let's go to the register and copy a toast yeah we can go with any toast here so let's go with successful toast because first we are giving the successful message right here so toast success and here instead of this we can give as res res dot data dot message because if we check in our chrome it's object and in that we are having the message so that's why we are giving res dot data dot message and let's deal with something as if condition so why i'm giving if condition is success message we are checking with success message if the success is true only then we'll give this or else we'll be giving another kind of message so if res dot data dot success that if that is true then we are going to send this toast message here so we'll paste this inside this if and else we are going to send a different message so that i'll be copy pasting a error message in the verify mail so here i'll just give a res dot data dot message res dot data dot message because if you check in auth controller first if it is true we are going to send a message as email verified successfully if it is a false we'll be sending as invalid invalid token let's save this and here also we'll deal right so we'll just give a log of error yeah and what we'll do is once the verification is done we no, no, no longer need this verify page it should uh will be doing something called auto close uh, after a few seconds like three or four seconds when the user is successfully verified that toast has been appeared then user no longer need this page so we'll be doing an auto close here so how do we do that in this if condition only we'll be doing that so in this if condition will be giving a set timeout so set timeout this takes arrow function and here we'll be giving a 3000 milliseconds that means a three seconds and we'll give here window dot close so this will close after three seconds we'll do the same thing for if it gets error also we'll give 
error after this toast sorry we'll close this also we'll give a set timeout if the user has a wrong or invalid token yeah and what i'll do is i need to uh beautify this page also right because now we are getting only a verify mail page and the params token so instead of this what we'll do we'll just add a few bootstrap classes to make it beautiful so here i'll give mx auto that means everything it will be in center of the page and here we can remove this h1 we no longer read it and params token also we are not going to print our token in the page instead of that we are going to use a link for user to re redirect to login or register page so let's see whether the law link is imported or not so link is we are going to import it manually and let's give here so link also we need to have a class name which has a btn btn dark that means a black button and i'll i want i'll show an option that user can redirect to so here i'll give a slash that means a login component and what i'll give is i'll give a name for this link that will be go to login page so if the user has been verified then i'll tell i'll show a way to user to login page so we'll increase time by one second so that user gets a time to log in to the application and after that i'll insert a image so this is one of the image i got so i'll just use this image img tag in this i'm going to paste and we're not getting any kind of error so let's check if we click on this token okay it says invalid token because already we have uh, verified that email that token that email so it's no longer in our database so if you check in our database that token is not there here so that's why we are getting that so what we'll do we'll start from first we'll just remove the user we'll start it from fresh so let's just go back i'll delete this okay let it be we'll first let's see whether we are able to log in so i'm giving my email id it should throw me a wrong message because there is no details or no records in the database so if i click on submit then it's throwing me invalid credentials so yeah then i'm going to register here here i'll give my name and my email id with a strong password so before uh, clicking on submit what i should get if i click on submit i should get that my uh, a mail has been sent to my email so what i'm going to do is i need to edit in auth route because if we check in register.js the message we are getting if success is from the back end so we are going to check in the back end only so register function yeah, if you see the register function it says just successful registration so instead of this we are going to extend this message and as registered successfully and a verification email verification mail has been sent to your email so we should be able to get this let's go and if i click on submit let's see what kind of message we are getting here 
yeah so we got registration successful and um email verification has been sent to my mail so let's see yeah if we check just now i got this mail it's a new one if i click on it then you can see it's zero minutes ago let's see first our database let's refresh we have a user details and is verified is false and let's see tokens yeah token is also there now let's go ahead and verify our email so i click on this token it will take me the new page and it says email verified successfully and once the four seconds has gone it is auto closed now if we check in our database is verified should be true yes it is true and the token should be auto delete yeah so our application is working fine but with a one small error if we are not successfully like if our mail verification is not done then also we can log in so i'll show you that so let me delete this and re-register again let me delete this also yeah let me register with the same details again i should get a successful message here yeah successful message i got and let me see yeah email also i got and if i check in our database there is a user with a verified as false so what i'll do is now i'll try to log in so let's try to log in with my credentials so these are my credentials and if i click on submit it says invalid credentials okay one d is missing here and if i click on submit here it is taking me to the dashboard page that makes no sense because user need to be verified then only the user needs to go into dashboard so we'll do another function here let's go into the auth controller here in login uh, function will have another condition yeah here after we'll find a user right and after that we'll compare and this here we'll be checking a condition with a if condition if user dot is verified that means if the user is verified then i'm going to send this like a token and all this data so let's cut it here and paste else i'm going to send another response saying that email is not verified so let's do that return res dot send and here i'll send this success as false then i'll send a message email not verified email not verified please check your inbox please check your inbox let's save this and we'll check whether everything is fine in our login.js if success we are getting this if failure we are getting this okay that's good so let's see uh is verified is false right yeah let's see in our application first we we'll log out now let's see login in these are my credentials yeah now if i click on submit i should get a error message that my email is not verified so you can see email not verified please check your inbox so that means unless i am not verified 
I will not be able to go into dashboard. So if you check here, dashboard, it is not taking me to the dashboard. Once I verify here, then only it will take me. So I'll click on this token. It says successful verified. And if I click on login page, it'll go here or else I can log in here again. So I'll let me log in again. Yeah, now click on submit. Now I should be able to go into dashboard. So this is, we have completely successfully project completed our project that is JWT Mon authentication. So we have done registration, login, and also we have handled very secure method that is JWT. And we have gone to the email verification also with the help of node mail. So in the next section, we'll see how to deploy our application on the Heroku platform. Right, guys, in this section, we are going to deploy our completed project. Now, so before deploying, I've told previously that in our code, that is in our application code, we are having so many like uh, email, password, there are so many vulnerable things, right? So that can't be exposed. So to prevent that, we are going to use one package called .env. So if we use this package, then all our credentials will be safe. They will not be exposed. Then we can go ahead and proceed to deploy in our Heroku platform. So first, what we'll do is this is official page of npm.js and this is the command for installing the .env and you can see weekly downloads that is more than 30 million this is one of the popular package env because that will cover your credentials or whatever the security thing is there in your code so let's save that so we are going to need that in a backend what we'll do is we are going to give npm i dot env so let's click enter Yeah, it's installing and installation is done. Let's just run our server also. If there's any error, we will be getting no to that. First, we'll be minimizing and closing all the files. So in that way, we'll be having a clear confusion. So close all. Yeah, then we got this .env file right here. So we can have our all the secret credentials or whatever the important which we don't want to be exposed we can save here so let's see where are our details no in author out we are having nothing in auth controller let's see from the start we are having anything no, nothing in register in login also okay in login we are having this secret key so this can't be exposed this we need to protect it so we'll having this secret key so what i'll do here is jwt key so all the variables will be stored in dot env file and all the variables will be called here with the process dot dot env so i'll tell you how we can import these variables into this and that can't be shown in our code so this is it secret key let's save this and we can remove this no needs of quotes also so here what we need to do is process dot env dot and our variable name so if you see our variable name is jwt key right so we can give this jwt key variable let's just save it and while saving the dot while doing any kind of edits and saving the dot env file we need to restart our server so let's restart our server again yeah now we are not having any kind of errors let's see if there's any kind of vulnerable or protected kind of text in our code as user update now here also we don't have anything 
in verified mail also no we don't have anything here as well so let's see in the mail sender yeah in mail sender we having a email and password right so what we'll do is we'll just remove this mail and give here as verify mail yeah and another one will be giving as a verify password we'll save this password also here we can remove quotes our password will be stored here so i've told right how to import simply with the help of process dot env dot the variable name so verify pass we'll just give pass what is that we've stored yeah we'll just give pass another one is verify mail process dot env dot verify mail so do we have anything else okay here also we can give as a process dot env dot verify mail yeah and uh, let's check if there's anything in auth middleware yeah we can give here as jwt key so process dot env dot jwt key do we have anything other else let's see in server.js no we don't have anything so we have covered with all the secret things which we don't want to expose now another thing we want to do is before deploying we need to change our code a little bit like here this is a development code we should be changing it to the production code so what we'll be doing is here we'll be having adding a new code here that new code is nothing but we'll be just having a few lines added so i've saved that in my notepad don't worry i'll be attaching this notepad as a document resource in our curriculum so let's copy this and paste it here so what it does is first it will check and before doing that we need to edit in a package.json also the scripts so first we'll remove this and we'll copy paste the scripts section also so this is the pre-built code for Heroku, deploying in Heroku. So if you check here, we have a npm uh, post build node once over all this. So that means whenever the no Heroku gets uh, like these files are uploaded into Heroku, it will first install all the npm. It will run the node once over dot .js just like we do here, and it will run all our clients also backend both of it will run and here we've told that the node env will be the production so if it is a production then it will run all these things here so let's save everything and now we are going to have a heroku account so let's see go to our heroku account so before going to Heroku account, we need to upload this code also into GitHub, right? So what we'll be doing is, we'll first, we don't need this node modules folder in the backend. So what we'll do is, there is something called in front end, there's something called .gitignore. So if we have this file and we mention whatever in this file, those will be ignored and not be uploaded into GitHub. So what we'll do, we'll just copy this file from front end and paste this file in the back end. 
so here the node modules and dot tnv all those files will be ignored by the github that means it won't be stored in the github so let's save here let's restart our server also yeah now let's minimize our client all our folders yeah now what we are going to do is first we are going to create her github repo so let's open our github and create a new repository i'll say this as a udemy auth app so i'll do this as a public only create repository and what i need to do is i need to give these commands in the console so let's go into vs code we don't need this server we'll just open a new terminal and make sure that you are in correct directory the mernstack jw this is the correct directory you should not be in client or you should not be anything else the main project you should be in here so first we need to give git init and after git init we need to give git add git space add space dot so this will add all the files to our github repo and after that if we go into this we'll be having the commit and the github remote so first we'll copy this github remote and give github commit so git commit and the message i'll be having as a deploy commit deploy commit so once the file has been added those will be committed to the github and now i need to paste that github remote add so this url it will be added all the files to this url so let's click enter and now i need to give git push hyphen u origin master so this will be pushed to master branch of our github repository so depending upon your internet connection this will take time uploading your files to the github so let's see let's refresh this page also yeah now if you can see all our files has been uploaded to the github so in the next video we'll see how to deploy in heroku platform because we we just don't need anything else we'll just need to connect our github to our heroku platform and give some variable names so i'll discuss that in our next video this is the heroku platform so you need to click on the new create a new app and here you need to name your application so i'll just name it as a udemy auth app so it's checking whether this name is available yeah that name is available and click on create app and before connecting to our github first what we need to do is we need to go into settings and we need to define some environment variables because we have this environment variables here right dot env so these variables should be filled in our platform application that is a deploy platform so here we will give key as a this and the value as this one so we'll copy this line let's paste this and we can ignore the remainings this will be the key value pair and add we are going to add similarly this four also remaining three also so so jwt key and the value will be the secret key so i'll explain you in a second why we are adding this here this will be the verify mail and verify pass
and we are down to our last environment variable here we'll give verify pass and a password so let's add this so all these environment variables has been added so that means if it go and check in our code because if you check in this here it should not have any idea because if we go into the controllers and if we go into auth controller or not this here we need to go into send mail mail sender and here we will having process.env verify email verify pass so it will not understand what this verify email what this process if we give in this platform environment variables then whenever that variable is executed it will be redirect to these values so now we'll connect to our deploy that is we'll be connecting our github account and this repository to this git so here let's check with udemy and search yeah we got this repository we need to connect this repository to the heroku platform so that is connected and we'll be going down yeah we can enable automatic deploys and yeah we can click on this deploy branch so this might take few minutes of time it will be you will be having all these messages here like how it's being deployed if you get a success message and you will be given a link to the published website so let's see it is still the building is happening all our files will be building and stored it will be executed in this platform both front end and back end then it will give us a link a unique link and if you click on that link then we'll be able to access our website so this is our deployed previously deployed finished project and this is a local one right so we'll be closing this local one once this is completed we'll be getting a new link when we click on that we'll be getting another website so it says the build succeeded the code has been working well and now it is being compressed so yeah it's done it's launching and we got a message saying that your app was successfully deployed and if we click on this link we should be able to access our website when it's the first time it will take some time to load your uh, application because it's just now deployed right so it will take some time to execute compile all code back and front end connect with the database all those things will be happening and it will take some time to load the very first time once it loads the first time you'll be getting this link and you can view this application in any platform like it will be in laptop mobile desktop any kind of thing so let's wait for it to completely deploy and show us